That's why I sent Larry the link over uh, snail mail. It should arrive in like five days. So sweet. I'll be ready. And on that note, <laughs> welcome everybody to uh, the latest edition of the American Praetorians live stream. We've been uh, having discussions about what exactly to call this thing. Mike is in favor of slack ops. But since we've got Larry here, uh, and Larry is an actual American Praetorian. He was a character in that series. Larry We're going to stick with American Praetorians for this, uh, for the moment. I like it's because Larry was a real one and not you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a highly fictionalized, much more in shape and tactically competent version of Larry was a fictional character in the series. Okay, let's we'll we'll say there are two American Praetorians here, shall we? <laughs> if, if that'll make you happy, Coop. Nothing. I'm not happy until you're not happy. That's <laughs> <laughs> naturally. All right. So why are uh, two American Praetorians and me and Mike, uh, the two Coops, why are we all gathered here tonight? I can explain that. And I'm going to because I started this whole thing. Uh, go for it. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things I do is a probably very unhealthy hobby is I'm an Internet zoologist of uh, weird niche people on Twitter. And oh, boy, are there a lot of them. Right. I mean, it is a zoo of neurotic people who really need therapy or who needed their dads to play catch with them, you know, and, but because their dad didn't play catch with them, they want a King or some shit instead. Um, I'm not even kidding. Right. So I was showing Larry, some of these people just showing the links. I thought they were funny in a group chat. Right. And it was just some, just some rando anonymous Twitter posters or X Zeters whatever they call it now, um, talking about how you just can't find love anymore. You can't date. You can't be happy. Women are all terrible now. And it's because of, well, obviously it's not because of. Speak for yourself, nerd. It's because of, I'm a happily married man. I don't know. I don't, it sounds like a skill issue, but, uh, <laughs> you know, and they're just, it's just this like, you know, Feminism has, the modern world has ruined women. You can't date. You can't be happy. And there's an entire ecosystem on Twitter, especially. And, it, you know, it grows out of the manosphere, just perpetuating this cycle of misery. And these dudes just commiserate with each other. So Larry and also Brad Torgerson just write a couple Twitter posts saying, this is, this is stupid. Life doesn't have to be like this. You guys are being ridiculous. And oh boy, did, the, did they come all piling in. It was a... Uh, the was, floodgates opened. It was an incel poetry slam. I tell you boys what. Well, the, best part funny... about this, the best part about this is I can see Brad being like, oh wow, these kids really need help. Here, let me like try and engage with them. And Larry's just like, look at these fucking losers. <laughs> Basically, yes. Okay, but with love. But with love. <laughs> um... definitely good cop and bad cop there, you know. Well, the, the, the funny thing is there's there's five thousand of them and versus me, and so it was we were evenly matched. And then there was five thousand of them versus me and Brad, so we had him surrounded. Um, and and the thing is, okay, so it was actually from a place of love because in, in real life, uh, for the last twenty something years, I probably spent fifteen of the last twenty years as some sort of young men's leader in my church. Uh, believe it or not, I know, yes, I have a life outside of the internet and people know, but like I'm a religious guy and for whatever reason, I'm always the guy that gets put with the rowdy teenagers, right? I'm, I'm the guy that they give all the cowboys and uh, and jocks and rowdy dudes that want to fight and do dumb crap. For whatever reason, they're like, like I'm the dude that should help them out to, to the, on the path to adulthood. It's orc logic. Yeah. They, they will only listen to the bigger orc. Yeah. yeah, you know what it is, honestly, is that you go in there and you establish dominance and and, <laughs> and they show him the gun safe and they're like, oh, well, he's cool. Well, listen, no, no, but what it, it is, is... It is 40K uh, leadership yeah. one. I was just like, whoa. The, the, the larger the man, the better the... the, better the uh, More the leaders doc, yeah. just taller than you? <laughs> yeah, and I, so I painted flames on my truck and we were good to go. Yeah. Uh, so I... I but I've watched for, for the last 20 years, and I've got four kids of my own, three are adults now, and, and productive adults, and I've watched these kids make it. 
and I've watched these kids make good choices, and I've watched these kids make bad choices. I've watched them make dumb choices. I've watched them make really dumb choices, and I've watched them make good choices. And so I'm watching these guys on the internet who are just like, doom, doom, doom. Women all suck. We can't date. We can't. Everything is impossible. You, uh, there's too much soy in the water, estrogen. I don't know, whatever. Whatever the fuck. Who knows? It's and the glenocracy, Larry. The, 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 the globo homo conspiracy. I, whatever. I heard all everything you could think of. I heard it. But the thing is, these guys were just like had consigned themselves to this perpetual doomerhood where nothing they did mattered. No choices mattered, and everything was due. And it was actually kind of sad. And so these guys are all coming and screaming at me and yelling at me. And, and I was like, and I, I kept fighting back and I fight back in, in my way that I do. You know, I, I, I take no crap off morons. And it, what, the conclusion I came to is that there's a lot of people who grift off this. You know, it's like they make a living off of doom, they're doom profiteers. Then there's all these other dudes who just life has kicked them in the balls. And so they're, they're just down. And the Doom Profiteers, they listen to these guys, and it's like for $19.99 a month, you can join the uh, the, the secret order of manhood. Uh, and, and we'll tell you how you're okay and everything is awesome for you, you know, because you're just so much better than these sheeple. The liminal and, order or whatever? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it, it, those dorks were in there and, and all these other dorks. It was just, it, it was just dumb, and it, it, it kind of baffled me. So I actually wound up right uh, – I, I got contacted by the Blaze – uh, the editor at the Blaze is like, "Hey, can we take your tweets and make them into an op-ed <laughs> for for young men?" And I was like, "Sure, what the hell?" And um, it just kind of blew up. But uh, I don't know. It's it. We're in a we're in a sad situation right now. And don't get me wrong. I'm not when I when I'm yelling at black pill doomers. The the woe is me. It's not just this thing. It's 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 any topic. Pick anything, and there's going to be doomers there. And whether it's politics, whether it's life, whether it's you know, having a job, buying a house, getting married, having kids, uh, you know, your sports team, <laughs> voting, whatever it is, there's doom. There's always the guys who come on, nothing matters. And then if you do stuff about this and you succeed, they've always got a reason as to why you could and they couldn't. And I think part of it is like Mike, Mike said, and I think Mike put this out, was if other people succeed, they must have cheated somehow. Because that means that if this guy didn't do it, that means it's on him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if, if, it's, if the situation can be resolved, if you can make it better, that means it's your fault, not society's fault. And nobody right. Yeah. They need an excuse and, and all that. Uh, they, they need to justify why they failed where others succeed. It is the exact same victimhood mentality that you used to see. They used to get pushed by, like, you know, like the left for the longest time. Well, it still is. And yeah. now, now certain elements of the right are just copying it. It's just the woke there, right now. There's a lot yeah. of commonality of that. It, it's always somebody else's fault because we it's victim status. So if you're a guy who's involuntary celibate because women women all hate you, women all suck, women are all awful, then you're a victim. It's not just that you're doing something wrong or you're looking for love in all the wrong places. You know, none of this stuff is new, guys. Uh, human beings are human beings. Or you're and a totally whole, online weirdo who doesn't know how to talk to other human beings. Yeah, and the thing is, I had dudes who were talking about rating women according to the, the, the on, their, on their scale of uterus suitability. And it was like, well, gee, I can't imagine why you aren't just like picking up chicks right there. That's, I mean, oh my gosh. I loved all the dudes who have probably never seen a vagina in their lives worrying about, well, if she's past 32, she's not fertile enough. Like, bro, bro, let's be honest. Yeah. Let's, that's well, the dudes who are like, it was creepy because we had some dudes like guys who were like 38 years old and it was like, well, I'll only date girls that are, you know, still in their, you know, 18 years old. That's ideal because anything beyond that and they're irreparably broken. And it's like, dude, you're not exactly that much of a cat yourself. And uh, also, it's kind of, actually, I even looked up the stats on this because I saw that, that that was like this little thing that these guys, this little trope these guys kept going over and over again. They're like, women just fall apart once they hit 30. Yeah. And, and if might, you want to have think- kids. Mike sent me a request for stats because I had like shown a, a graph like 
previously where like some Dutch uh, study had shown like the average age of first child for a woman um, throughout like the last hundred years. And it used to be like high 20s, early 30s. And then it dipped immediately after the world wars, basically the baby boomers. That was the thing now. And also and then, people traditionally had large families, you know, three, right, four, right. five. But that's what this, this study was just for the first, the age at your first child. And it was yeah. like high twenties, low thirties. Well, and the one and that then wars up, happened. <laughs> the one that I pulled up was interesting. Cause they were like talking about how they, they make it sound like once you hit 32, if you, I, I had, I had, my wife had her last kid after in like her mid thirties. And, and the thing is they're like, they're active. Like if you have a kid after 32, um, from your, your dusty womb of doom that, that he's bound to have like mutations and flippers and six fingers on each hand and, and, and horns and whatever scales, tail, whatever. Fire, he breathes fire. I don't know, <laughs> but he had a this teeth. Cool. Like, I don't Why know. Against this. <laughs> but, but the thing is, it's actually not. If you look at it, yes, there are more incidences of uh, birth defects, but it's like it's like small. It, it, it's like oh, it's it, like, ooh, you it have increases like a, from like 005 percent to 006 percent, and they're like, oh, it's a twenty percent increase. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, most kids nowadays are are fine anyway, and you're you're. But there's just there was just a, what a dumb excuse, what a dumb hill to die on. And we also drew out all the weird racists too, because I I am not. Uh, I am not of pure Aryan stock, you may guess by looking at me. Uh, uh, sh shock, I know. And uh, none of us here are. Yeah, and yeah, so I, I had to. I, I've been disowned by the white racists on Twitter as well because I'm too Mediterranean. Yeah, I mean, you're straight up. You straight up look like a Roman legionnaire, man. Not only, <laughs> not only is he a wop, he's a rosary twirling Vaticanite, is what he is. Yeah. Oh, he's a papist. <laughs> But I, I, which it's funny because like before the eighties, there was no. <laughs> <Close>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that's Lord, always the funny he's thing. Just like me. <laughs> that's always a funny thing, though. It's it's like oh no, uh, which got I have to worry about fertility and that stuff because you know I have to worry about like the genetic purity of my kids. I was like, dude, do you? I mean, I think that ship has sailed. No matter which woman. I had one guy, this fat bastard, and it was funny as hell because I had a picture because I was talking about like you're raising your kids, and at some point I was talking about how I was proud of my son and like if, like because the biggest the wins in life are like raising your kids and, and seeing your kids go from being these little little helpless things to being productive human beings with their own lives and and all this exciting stuff going. It's awesome. It's, I love it. I, I'm a huge fan of family and and marriage and and fatherhood. I love it. I love it. And I was talking about like having kids, and also how proud I am of my son. And these dumbass, are, you don't have a kid. It's like, yeah, I have a kid. And, and, and here's the thing: my son is. An, have you guys have all? I think most of you have met my sons. I don't know, Coop. I don't think you have, but but Pete and, and Mike have met my kid. I I've heard of him because uh, which guy? You post all the the stuff is like, yeah, he just you know he dominated at the football game and that stuff. And your usual fan base is like, that's great. Don't know anything about football. It's like, yeah, raise them jocks. Yeah, and so I've got my, my son is this absolute Chad, right? And so I put up a picture of me and my son, and I'm six foot five, and everybody knows how big I am. And my son is towering over me, and he looks like six foot six Pedro Pascal, right? <laughs> Only ripped, and he's flipping the double birds. And, and, and I put the caption of the picture to this one dork is like, Here I am with something you'll never have, or here, here's my son with something you'll never have, a father who's proud of him. <laughs> and, uh, so I put this up with this fat bastard. This fat bastard's like, well, you and your kid are obviously a Maramutz. And I was like, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry I don't live right. up to the racial purity of freaking Herm Herman Goring over here and his, no, it was with funny his so seven the, chins. He was a the literal neck thing. beard. The literal thing. neck beard. Neck beard. I shaved, I shaved like <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> and this dude but, is just like. <laughs> the Maramut thing, it, it's. Yeah, there, there's like a, obviously a racial uh, component to it, but it mainly comes from like, um, oh, Americans come from like all these di disparate cultures that all just melting pot into an American. Like you don't have like this, you know, going back seven generations of pure whatever ethnic nation, uh, national culture and that stuff. I was like, 
Yeah, but Larry's Portuguese. I and actually the do. The Portuguese <laughs> have a very long tradition of just going to some far-flung exotic locale oh, and intermingling with that, we, that culture. My ancestors nailed everything. I'll put it that way. Uh, I was talking to another Korea one time who had served in the Navy for like 25 years, and he said in his career he had found a Korea in every port city in the world. Yeah. <laughs> What's more funny is don't you come from that like weird like enclave of pure Portuguese settlers in California? Too? I do, yeah. Like, I'm, I, so actually the, the funny thing is I'm half Portuguese, which made me a freak of nature amongst every, all my peers. Because oh, so everybody else I like, grew up Oh, yeah. So everybody else I grew up with was I was a mutt because everybody. my mom was an Okie, even though she'd never been to Oklahoma in her life. In the San Joaquin Valley, if you were white, but you weren't Portuguese or Mexican, then you were an Okie. You just got assigned to the Okie bucket, you know? But is this the one Grapes of Wrath drop rule? <laughs> it is. Yeah, I'm from the Grapes of Wrath area. And uh, and so the funny thing, and it was funny because my grandpa, to my grandpa, the Okies were the villains of the story, right? right? Totally. My grandpa hated the, the Dust Bowl people. I, I could go off on that. It's funny as hell. But, um, you know, so I, every day I grew up with was ethnically pure Portuguese going back for seven generations and, and all this other crap. And it's like, what a pointless friggin' distinction. What yeah, a, but you're not a communist, so you clearly oh, diverged from the Portuguese, you know, culture. <laughs> I know, because all, oh. all the, all the right-wingers moved. Yeah. To San Joaquin uh, Valley. Well, I, and Brazil. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm Irish. Look at the state of Ireland right now. <laughs> yeah, there, are more, there, reason... there are more ethnically Irish people in America than there are in. There are probably more ethnically Irish people in one state in America than there are in Ireland. Well, ironically, yeah, when we... but uh, uh, which uh, it's a funny story. Um, I was uh, laying over in Ireland on a, uh, a like a deployment, and we heard on the radio there was a radio contest where the winner would go to Boston for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> so the Irish were traveling to Boston for St. Patrick's Day to celebrate. And that was that was their trip. Sorry, Ireland. America's real Ireland now. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there's a reason Pete and I aren't, like, huge on the IRA, despite us both hating the British. Um, and that's because, like, around the 60s, 70s, like, it turned into, like, this weird socialist shit. And so all the original IRA guys were like, yeah, enough, fuck that. We're, we're done. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll take our, our bisected country. That's it. I do right, really right. like, the, I, I love the aesthetic of the ski mask and, a, and, a, and an M16, you know, old school. Yeah. Gotta love that. Yeah. And a track suit. But, but in the late late 60s, early 70s, they started getting training from the Soviets in the Bekaa Valley yeah. and they turned hard Marxist. Went to Libya and all that shit. Yeah. yeah. Marxists ruin everything. I know, yes, right? Bunch of lamos. <laughs> but on, on the. I, I don't know how. I'm sure the Marxists are responsible for the Doomer movement somehow too. I don't know. Yeah, active measures, but yeah. Yeah. But I, so I, I do want to to point out when we like explain how these guys are all fucked up uh, because they're like, oh, you know, it's all feminism's fault or the the global homo agenda and that shit. It's like I agree. It's just the, hopelessness is a a self fulfilling prophecy. Like yeah. this is not the way. You're not helping anybody. By yeah. being a doomer, you're it's, just making the situation worse. Yeah, it's I, like oh, voting's rigged, so I'm not going to vote. It's like it's great. Name an election that was won by not voting. I mean, that's the thing. There's, it's it's honestly kind of bizarre because if you say, don't give in to despair, have hope, fix what you can fix, they're like, well, you're you're saying there's not a problem. No, I'm very much saying a problem. I mean, I, I'm recognizing there's the problem. There are, I mean, don't get me wrong, actually, I got three kids of a of dating age right now. It's a zoo out there. It's a mess. Uh, we talk about people like buying a house. The housing market right now sucks. Interest rates are through the roof. The housing market sucks. But if you go into the doom cycle where everything you do doesn't matter and everything sucks and everything's going to suck forever and nothing matters, dude, you've already checked out. And even worse, if you've checked out, you're, you're a crab in a bucket trying to pull the other crabs down that are still doing something. So I see people like, well, well, don't vote. Voting voting doesn't matter. Well, I'm the guy that wrote all the articles, all the controversy articles about how cheating works and as a, from an audit perspective. And the harder, I mean, the more actual votes there are uh, that they have to overcome, the harder they have to cheat, the harder it is. 
And so, no, it's actually quite the contrary. Voting still absolutely matters. But people are like, oh, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. And they just check out. Everything's rigged. Everything's broken. And I remember, and this is, this is going old school, because I know when I first met Mike, we were young gun nuts, and we were spent on the internet gun farm. There was a doomer thing back in the late 90s. We're dating ourselves here, uh, early 2000s, where we thought we were going to lose the gun rights battle. I mean, really, at that time, we really thought we were losing. We thought gun rights were, like, on the way out, and we were, like... And know, look how that getting, turned out. Yeah, we're getting past the jury box, and we're heading to the bullet box. I mean, we're heading to the ammo box stage. And, we're, and there was all these doomers in the in the gun rights movement who just checked out. Nothing we did matters. Uh, why fight? Why turn out? Why vote? Why call your reps? Why uh, Why teach people? Why, why do anything? Why Nothing matters. And it was interesting to me, as I was a young... Uh, Go getter kind of dude, and I'd be out there fighting, and then, and and it was the crab bucket guys were the worst. It wasn't it wasn't the liberals and the communists that I was arguing with and fighting with. And I'd go to the state legislator and fight with the stupid PTA reps and all these dumbasses. It wasn't them. They weren't the worst part. The worst part were the people that were supposedly on my side, but who were trying to tear down everybody who was doing something. Uh, back when I shook up um, the whole award system in publishing, uh, same thing. The people who were supposedly on my side, the people who were like, oh, I agree with you, there's problems, but but don't do anything because it, it, it's just you can't do anything. Everything's rigged, everything's broken, uh, nothing will ever change. Why are you upsetting the apple cart? You know? The, the, so to me, doomers are, are actually worse. Yeah, there's problems. There's a lot of problems in the world, and stuff. a lot of stuff is cyclical. Some stuff gets better. Some stuff gets worse. Uh, things come and go. That's, that's the nature. The only, the, only, the only thing that never changes is everything changes, right? So there's always going to be problems. There's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be failings. There's always going to be societal issues. But if you get on the wrong side of them, that's one thing. But if you're on the right side, but you're pulling down the fighters, you're pulling down the people who make the changes and succeed, you're the bigger part of the problem. And you need to correct your shit. Yeah. So, you're not actually on the, at that point, you're not actually on the right side. You're on the other side. You're you're the uh, Epaminondes leading the Persians over the pass. Yep. Yeah, you can claim to be morally pure. It's kind of like when you get in the argument, like, anytime there's an election coming up, and uh, the, the, the People are like, well, this guy is not good enough, and this guy is not good enough, so I'm not going to do anything. I, I'm going to go just, yeah, they're quitters who never shut up. The one thing they can't quit is shutting up. <laughs> and yeah. it's like they, they come they, at they, it. they can either bitch about it on Twitter or go talk to a woman, and they can't do that. Yeah, and, and the, the thing is, it gets me too, is they're morally pure. Because for the rest of us that exist in the real world, stuff ain't perfect. Stuff is never ideal. Stuff... I mean, we get into politics, no candidate is going to ideally be 100% perfect, right? Never. They're always going to suck. So you pick the one that you think is the best and you think can win, right? It will do and, the least amount of damage. <laughs> and do the, or do the least amount of damage because that's the real world. When you're hiring people, you never get to hire the perfect employee. They don't friggin' exist. That's a myth. That's a unicorn, man. If well, you, if you, you find one. my resume. Okay, yeah. Uh, when you're dating, are you ever going to find the perfect woman? Here's the cool thing about love is you'll think she's perfect <laughs> long <laughs> enough, but you're human, and everything sucks. Everything is gonna. Everything has failure points, right? Yeah, they're not. They're not two D enough, right? Yeah. So you check out. So these guys check out instead because they're morally pure. It's like, oh well, you're settling. Yes. Welcome to the mortal existence. <laughs> Welcome to the real world. Welcome yeah. to actual human nature. So it's Larry's like, about to die because Bridget's in the chat over on Facebook. So she heard all of Oh, is she? I um Hey, she's she's way more perfect than I am. Just for yeah. the record, she's the yeah. one that settled. Okay, so you're not gonna die. She's over there being like, Yep, I settled real hard. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I like she's, you. she's sitting there, it's like, oh, he wants water, does he? <laughs> I like Which my you, wife brought me water. It was very nice of her. I like you with these same guys. Some of these same guys. There's a lot of overlapping groups of miserable people on the internet here. They, this is a very complex Venn diagram of the different bubbles here, right? But you hear them complain about, oh, you just 
I'm gonna be like a wage cuck in your wage cage, slaving away for the men for no reason. Like, yeah, you know, earning a living. That's just that's being a cuckold. You're right. Everything much better to just bitch on the internet. Everything sounds horrible if you describe it in the stupidest way possible. You know, that's just how it is. Which which is exactly what these people do. In yeah. fact, is uh well, let's say, let's say, theory, okay, like, look, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll use myself an example. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is lobsters are mammals. No, um, yeah. that's that's okay. what they do. Let's say, let's say, let's say you hate your job. Let's say you are a wage slave. Let's say you that you hate, let's say you're a corporate drone. You're a cog in a machine. You let's say you're a junior accountant at a Fortune 100 company that's a soulless mega corporation. I'm just spitballing here, okay. What do you do? You serve your freaking time. You build up your resume. You gain valuable skills, and you get the fuck out. You go do your own thing. Or That's it. you know, you the best part is better. about that though is this this wage slave and like you know uh, the the cubicle cock and all that shit. Is they're talking the same way that they hate when women uh, talk about them? Be like, I only date guys that make six figures. I only. You know, date guys that are like CEOs. I only date ambitious guys that are in like upper management and all that shit. And they're like, oh, these women, they just won't give us a chance. Meanwhile, they describe everybody else who's not upper management or making six figures or is like Andrew Tate or some shit. They describe him as a, a wage cuck or a wage slave or something like yeah. that. So it's like, this stuff, like the manosphere is third wave feminism for men. Yeah. yeah. Same. It, it absolutely is. And you're talking about like, like break the glass ceiling. Yeah. Well, because it's always like, it's like, man, I've been out there. I've been in the trenches, and the women are all like this. They're all shit. All women are like that. It's like, okay, well, what women do you hang out with? They're like, man, I'm over at the clubs. It's like, <laughs> okay. Uh, dude, I – okay, here's the thing. Uh, this is advice, advice to young men here. Boys, you marry who you date, okay? If you date trash, you're going to marry trash. Like, and I get uh, these guys – bros, young men. Take it, take it from your Uncle Mike here, right? The girls on Tinder probably aren't looking for a husband. Mm -hmm. Also, the girls on Tinder uh, can't find a date normally. That's why they're on Tinder. Just saying. Yeah. You know, okay, so Evil yeah. Penguin says, Doomers also look at money and things as measure of success. No other accomplishments mean anything to them. I think that's one reason I pissed them off so much. Because <laughs> you have all those things. Because because on paper, I'm all I'm all the bullshit. I'm all the shallow bullshit that's supposed to matter, and I'm the guy telling them, "Nah, this stuff doesn't really matter." Um, okay, so like you can, and I, I, the, the thing I kept coming back to is happiness. You want to find real joy and happiness in life. This is the stuff that matters, and it's it's basically stuff like family, making a difference, uh, building a legacy, raising kids, um, helping people serving others uh you know all that old school you know religious stuff i got screamed at a lot for that um uh, because but religion tells them not to to be a fucking degenerate well the neckbeard atheists had had formed an alliance with yeah. the uh, with with the with the porn addicted incel community to flank and now, around now they're all like bronze statue avatars and shit yeah and it's funny how many of these dudes i argue with had anime avatars like like 90 93 yeah. percent of them Anime it's avatars like, or the old Greek statues, which is funny <laughs> because we're, we're talking about this, but pretty much all of us like really came together as a friend group over this guy named Ivan Throne, who was like oh, kind of like the precursor to all this shit, or it's like an early uh, it was like a warning Ivan, sign of, of Ivan all this Throne stuff. was kind of like a, uh, a prototype Andrew Tate. He was yeah. a he was a one of those doom profiteers. And now, yeah, but, but in, that instead of instead of describing like everything's hopeless, he said everything's hopeless for you unless you act like me and become a ninja and fucking like like treat everything way more seriously than it is and like describe your boring fucking life like it's a Steven Seagal movie. Also, you know you know where Ivan Throne ended <laughs> up. Andrew Tate. <laughs> he's one of Andrew Tate. He's like one of Andrew Tate's sycophants now. Andrew yeah. Tate. Um, like 15 I am shocked. I'm shocked. What a no, shocking no, turn of Andrew events. Andrew Tate is way younger than him too, so that's got to be really humiliating. 
so if anybody doesn't know, uh, Ivan Throne was uh, a, a dude who he was like, like legally deaf or whatever. So instead of speaking because he, he couldn't hear himself talk. So he couldn't like speak in the correct pronunciation. He would just send out these newsletters. Right. And these newsletters were the most batshit fucking like overhyped, you know, oh, alpha male my vitality. Uh, you know, it was like, I studied uh, at a strip mall ninja dojo. So I am like the most baddest of badasses. Right. And I'm going, oh, I'm going to take sports. down the, the, the Illuminati myself and all that shit. Do you remember the empty plate carriers? Yeah. Oh, remember and he described meeting somebody in like a place. It was on the Colfax Avenue in Denver. Yeah. And Colfax used to be kind of, it used to be kind of dingy. There was a lot of strip clubs and tattoo parlors and like check catching stores and shit there. Which you, which means, but it wasn't which exactly he was running into fun. 90s Hell's Kitchen or like 70s Hell's Kitchen in a Steven Seagal movie. You know, what? it's like well, I gotta find Richie. But you know he was you know he was like at an Applebee's or some shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, me and Mike actually used that for a for a for a story once as like some clandestine secret meeting. Welcome to Applebee's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We went over the details the and this delicious that was blooming the dark onion. Triad, man. And the dark triad, man. Way, the dark triad, I guess, is a a pseudo psychological term referring to uh the three psycho- Machiavellian traits. Psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism. Yeah. And Ivan Throne professed to have all three of these, and you were supposed to look at this and like this is a guy I'm gonna trust. I'm gonna give him money. I'm, I'm gonna give him twelve hundred dollars to go to his weekend seminar. I'm a psychopathic narcissist. Send me yeah. nineteen ninety nine, and I'll give you a newsletter every month. What a he great deal! Like a hundred dollar value for only five easy payments of ninety nine ninety nine. You know the prison system is filled with a lot of dudes who are psychopathic narcissists. I mean, just. I, the thing is, yeah, those are the same traits. They talk about how a lot of successful powerhouse CEOs have those same traits. You know, a, a lot of people share a lot of traits. That that doesn't mean jack, right? Yeah. So Plus, they also use those traits into working 100 hours a week. <laughs> 90% of successful CEOs have two lungs. I'm just saying. What's the other percent? <laughs> Three. They pay in to get the bonus one. Uh, you got to go to special. Like the black carapace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got you, the skull and bone stuff right there. You get your third lung. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, so I've been thrown. Uh, I find this hilarious with the whole like Greek statue theme that all these doomers have in their their profile pictures. It's because Ivan Throne first came on our radar because he was just exalting this uh, a sculpture that babe, an artist the made. Babe statue. The babe, babe sculpture. sculpture. And it was a, a really good sculpture. Oh, it's beautiful. Like, this is the art that men live and die for. This is what they fight for. This is what the men of the West uh, are, are doing for. It's like no woman could have ever made this with the, the tender loving care that went into every detail. This is this epitomizes the West. And somebody was like, yeah, the uh, sculptor is an Asian immigrant living in France, you fucking dork-ass loser. Chinese, it was this little Chinese woman, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, so, so from now on, Babe sculpture is is the Deus Volt of uh. We, of we, will, we will, the West will fight to the death for Babe sculpture. And don't get me wrong, Babe sculpture was hot. I mean, it was, just, it was a great sculpture. It was a great sculpture. It was just damn funny, man. I think a lot of these dudes who have the um the 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 Greek philosopher thing, they 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 act like they read Greek philosophers. No, Pete Nealon reads Greek philosophers, <laughs> yeah. right? And he can point out where they fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pete, Pete, right. Pete knows what's up. I mean, it's a an affectation. Of, a lot of these dudes are self-professed fans of Nietzsche. Now, I am not a student of philosophy. I found it boring. I, yeah, haven't read it. I haven't read a lot of Nietzsche, but I have seen just enough of Nietzsche to know that everyone who's a big fan of Nietzsche is an insufferable ass. Like, 99% of the time. And they don't well, even have half the mustache he did. And Pete, oh. correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe Nietzsche himself was like a giant train wreck of a human being trying to figure stuff out, and he actually wasn't a doomer. He, he died in, in, in a way he was. He died in an insane asylum. 
Yeah, but yeah, wasn't he, he it like his whole thing was like trying to figure out why, like, like how 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 to make life better, and he never could. That's <clears throat> first. First things first. I got I got a C minus in philosophy <laughs> in my one philosophy class, so. That does that does Nietzsche too much justice. <laughs> okay, I, I have not actually read Nietzsche himself. I have, however, read Chesterton's treatment of Nietzsche, and Chesterton had zero time for him and basically laid him out as a doomer. Okay, so I love Chesterton, and, and, and not, but I didn't read him as a philosopher. I just read him as a really good writer. He was you both. Know? Yeah, it it helps if you can mix those two together. That's. Yeah. I mean. Uh, Fulton He's Sheen just Christopher Rocchio a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Fulton Sheen asked, asked uh, Chesterton to write the foreword to his first book, which was on religion and philosophy. And Chesterton said he wasn't a philosopher, in which point Fulton Sheen said, except that orthodoxy is one of the best books of philosophy that's been written in the last century. So you guys hear a cat? Is that is that real? I hear it too, yeah, but it's it not is. mine. Oh, thank God. Uh, um, it's okay. So, uh, Pete, <laughs> uh, is that uh, a little? Yeah. Okay. So, so Pete just got a new cat, and his old cat is not a fan of it. <laughs> so. Oh man! No, some of these guys need a pet. Just get a pet. <laughs> I, I I can't do that to the pet though. Like that's true. That, that's true. Some you know of these that, guys. Like, no no animals were harmed in the making of this depression. Like yeah. you can't do that with them. Okay, so the put down yeah. the rabbit, Lenny. The you important know? thing is the important thing is here is like the scumbags, the perpetual scumbags. Screw them. The doom profiteers. Fuck those guys. The ones that matter are the, actually just the decent young men who are yep. lost. And there it is a problem. There, there. The world is awash right now of young dudes who don't know where to go because society has failed. Um, and we've got society's institutions have let these boys down. And this is across the board. We're seeing millions and millions of disaffected young men, and it sucks. And and so the real question is, how do we help those guys out and get them on the path now? And I don't have all the answers. I have guys who's like they get all mad at me, and it's just some rando dude, you know, some name and numbers Twitter account. He's like, "Well, that what you suggest is too simplistic." Well, keep in mind, this is a tweet, not a thesis, right? Right. And he's like, "Well, that doesn't solve my problems." Like, dude, I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know your problems. We're all unique individuals. This one they, size fits all. Or they'd be like, "You don't," or they'd be like, "You don't know my life at all." Like, you don't say rando anon. You yeah, know, Rando, nineteen ninety nine, four twenty, sixty nine. I, I, I got no friggin' idea who you are. I, I think I kind of do I do I do like you because they just posted eighteen hundred tweets in a twenty four hour period. I kind of know their life. Okay, that guy. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> I but didn't honestly, want to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's the thing, though. Okay, so like I talked about, me personally, I got my own kids. That's my personal responsibility is making sure they turn out okay. But then I've got like. Like I said, I, I do this stuff at my church because I, that's something that I, I like and I'm good at. And, man, these are awesome kids. These are awesome kids. And I see people today talk about, like, Gen Gen Z is lost. Gen Z is hopeless. Gen Z. No. The kids Gen are all Z right. Gen Z is sick of shit. <laughs> yeah, Gen Z, I think, is going to be just fine. Like, like, like out here, I live out in the sticks, which is one reason I think the kids are okay, you know, because we, we moved out in the middle of nowhere. We got away from town. The kids I deal with all the time, and they're good kids, and they're going to be good men. And, and honestly, like I, I, I look at the the local football team that my boy was on. It's just like the the Wolverines from Red Dawn. All right, they'd, they'd be all right. They're good boys. And the thing is, there is hope out there for these kids. Like it's like like what do we give advice to the Zoomers? Man, the advice I give to these kids, honestly, make the best choices you can. Have a higher purpose, whatever that purpose may be. And I, I talk about like for me personally, I like religion but I got yelled at by all the angry atheist neckbeards. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter what it is. You've got to have a higher purpose. A man needs a purpose. A man without a purpose is an accident waiting to happen. You've got to have dreams. You've got to have goals. You've got to work towards something. That's the key. And what, whatever that something might be, it doesn't matter. It's up to you. It's, up, it's what you're passionate about. But you need to find your passion. Uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, we're talking about the dating thing. Date women that you are willing to marry. Don't date trash. 
don't don't you know I, I don't understand a lot of guys they, they go to places with horrible shallow people and they meet horrible shallow women that want horrible shallow things and then they're baffled why it doesn't work out okay no you need to find I don't and here's the thing I can't tell you where to meet women because I don't know you but what I can tell you is go to wherever you think the people who would be into what you're into. And when I say into, I'm not talking your kinks. I'm talking about moral values. I'm talking about a higher power. So like me and my wife, we've been married for 25 years. And we, we, we've had this slogan the entire time is team Korea in it to win it. Right. We're partnership from the from the very get-go from when we first started dating we were partners we were we were in it together we supported each other i supported her when she had trouble she supported me when i had trouble we bail each other out we're there for each other because we're working to the same goal and that's who you're looking for and where you're going to find her i don't know that's up to you it might be waffle house okay uh, you know, whatever it doesn't matter but find that that's what you're looking for and then Find something that you can do to make a good living. And there's a lot of stuff out there. It might not be the glamorous thing you dream of, but it's something. And it's get that something and do that something while you build the skills to do the thing you're passionate about. I, I, I'm a novelist. I got the, the awesomest job in the world. Right? I write books. I make bull crap up and entertain people. It's friggin' awesome. I got the coolest job ever. I didn't do that overnight. I've been doing this for 15 years. And before that, I was an auditor. You know, because that was a valuable skill. I, I, and before that, I milked cows. I did construction. I, 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 I dragged drunk guys out of a country bar. Okay, I, I, I was at one point. I was out of work. I went to. I, I left my professional corporate career to go back and drive a bread truck. It doesn't matter. You do what you need to do to stay going forward as you're working to build the skills you need to do the thing that you're passionate about. And your passions will change too. They'll evolve over time. Um, serve others. This sounds so trite, and I got yelled at once again by the by the uh, irreligious. But it doesn't have to be religious. Do things to help other people. You you will improve your life immeasurably by serving others, and it can be in a million different ways. It doesn't have to be the soup kitchen, okay? It doesn't have to be you know big charity donations it doesn't matter what you do but you've got to do something when there's flooding go fill sandbags right I, I dragged all my kids along this last year to fill thousands and thousands of sandbags they did not like it at the time <laughs> okay but if you serve others you will bless your own life period uh if it, it i do a lot of stuff for other writers because i am in a position in my career where i can boost other writers and so i try to all the time, do something. Can I help everybody? No. Uh, do I fail sometimes? Constantly. But that that's okay. I just get back and I try it again. So so I, that's my – I, I could ramble on life advice for hours. And in fact, the no, kids that, in Sunday – the kids in Sunday school than, know this. Like, that was like, way better than the advice I was going to give, which was just stop watching anime. Um, <laughs> stop watching <laughs> that's, a good one too. <laughs> that's bad for you guys. Uh, you know – Exercise. <laughs> I'm like the, I'm the hypocrite there on that one. I'm old now, though. Guys, if you can't if you can't quit cold, cold turkey, at least dial back. Like cut, like cut out the weird shit, okay? <laughs> if it has feet in the title or step anything, just stop. You ain't right. <laughs> yeah, I'm Pizza, not gonna. I'm, all right, I'm ending the stream now. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm, yeah, because we can't. You can't get better than that, man. I mean, I'm not going to judge anybody's personal proclivities. That ain't my that ain't my job. Okay, I ain't oh, your dad. Fuck, I always, I absolutely will. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, well, life on track. That's the big thing. There's a there's another there's a saying of Alexander Solzhenitsyn that's been going around a bit on online lately. Live not by lies, and I think that's equally important. Is you have to live an honest life you have to live according to truth as best as you can pursue it and that's, that's going to get you kicked in the teeth i think that's a big thing man a lot of people profess one thing and do another and that is not a good way to live like like, like you you 
you, if you're not at peace with yourself, uh, you, you can't you can't go like that. You got you got to be true to what your actual moral compass is, and that's one reason I said like date who you marry, uh, and find somebody who's in it to win it with you. Couples that are divided on that moral truth, they all struggle. Like every couple I know that is like a big division between them, like. Like, let's be trite and say, you know, Republican husband, liberal wife, right? How often are those marriages happy? Especially uh, sometimes. Well, it, it, here's the thing is, is politics and uh, morals are entirely different. And moral right. morality is infinitely more important. Yeah, I was just using that as like a real basic example. Right, but, but it, that would be my vice is that um, everybody's trying to find moral solutions through political solutions or – Oh. solve well, moral problems honest. through political solutions you're not going to do that no because the, they both they both suck yeah I, but the moral character the moral character of a society or even like a small community is infinitely more important than the system of government that rules over it um yeah well so. look at it this way like let's say i mean uh, as far as in it to win it when you have a relationship where like the wife has a, a vision of the future of what she wants for you and your family you That's married wildly a psychic? divergent, you know, and that, that is not going to lead you to happiness. And if you pretend to want what the other one wants, it's like Pete says, you're not being true to yourself. And and that's just a recipe for disaster. These are things you need to talk about before you tie the knot, too. I mean, this is mm -hmm. this is yeah. when you're well, these guys first, we need to get them to talk to girls, period. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but at the same time, let, let's speak in their language. You can't just activate a trap card after you've already started the marriage. All right, you gotta, you gotta be upfront about your goals and that stuff. And uh, I, don't know. I, I play a, a squirtle. <laughs> yeah, we do have a bit of an, an important uh... at kindness. Well, first of all, we're not even halfway through the stream, so relax. Second of all, I'm not telling you who the, who the pale man was, really. So. <laughs> Uh, we we can't we're we're actually that's redacted we are sworn to secrecy forever on that one actually on my deathbed i think i think it's coop is i'm gonna whisper it to coop on my deathbed and then no one will believe him bold of you to assume i'm gonna live longer than you <laughs> <laughs> as you're smoking <laughs> that said i mean you, lung cancer might get you but heart disease probably will get me first so we're in a race to the finish here Oh, that, that whenever somebody's I, I like, oh, you know, uh, smoking will kill you. I, my first answer is like, no, I didn't. I can't believe it. I made it made it all this time without ever learning that. And really? Two, if, if, really? Smoking's what, God. if smoking's what kills me, I win. Yeah. If only, if only there was a series of public service commercials throughout yeah. the nineties and two thousands. Oh my God! Let's not forget all the garbage that the three of us got exposed to in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you burned a lot worse stuff than tobacco. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, tell me that there weren't WMDs over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that was uh, – we decided we decided that wasn't true when it was convenient. Yeah. I spent a month hanging out around the Muthana chemical complex, which supposedly was deactivated in the 90s. But I'm just waiting to see what kind of time bombs those left behind, that left behind. Yeah, but at the same time, you were just like, mm, still better than walking around a Mop 4. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, mm, it's hot. If I die, I die. Mop four in 120 degree weather now, or you might die in 20 years. I'm, I'm just saying, the guys on the ground usually aren't the most forward thinking motherfuckers. But even if you are, think about it. 120 now, Mop four, die maybe in 20 years. Yeah. Me and Mike, me and Mike have a good friend who is another EOD guy that Mike, Mike knows, Tony. Who, who was the most premature 50-year-old, 20-year-old uh, you'd ever meet. and Because oh, he was that voice of – he was the constant voice of responsibility. You know, like the, he was always the voice of reason. And yeah. they attached him to the Marines. <laughs> he would have to tell them to stop going out looking for IEDs for him them to go. Like, I'm not saying that we were digging up the caches <laughs> eight hours before EOD got there. But. Yeah. Look, if you didn't want us to throw rocks at the, the IEDs, you shouldn't have taken fucking, you know, an eternity to get out there. Now, granted, when, yeah, uh, when the platoon commander walks out and looks down into the hole on the side of the road that it's a possible IED, 
my team leader and I did uh, get behind the armored Humvee just in case. All I'm going to say is, guys. Sir, will you stop walking up to try to kick the, uh, the potential IED? But the compass said to go there. All I'm going to say is your calls are very important to us, and they're answered in the order which they were received. <laughs> Now, the, the, probably the best uh, waiting on EOD story I had was it was, about, it was about eight hours, sun had gone down, everybody's on NVGs, and all of a sudden, the entire landscape around us through NVGs starts flashing. What the, what the hell is going on? Oh, shit. Because that F-18 targeting IR pod was uh, lazing us. Wondering about all these guys in a field in the middle of the night with weapons. Yeah, they they did that to our entire PB. We had to we had to call off an airstrike on ourselves. Sounds about right. We didn't call yeah. the airstrike in, but some idiot saw on the sat maps. He was like, "Oh, there's a compound here with a bunch of military age males with uh, firearms." There, it's probably a bad guys. Yeah. They're like, "Nope, yeah. that's uh, that's our HQ." Yeah, my, my uh, team leader at the time just looked up and said, everybody turn your strobes on right now. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool. They're marking the targets for us. So, yeah, I started um, kind of noticing some of these these weird subcultures on Twitter when I started poking around Twitter back in 20. It was after the election when things got really stupid. And uh, things have not yet quit being stupid. Just to... oh no, they're we're on the slide of stupid. Yeah, they're, well, they're, because they're the stupidity going, going downhill. Stupidity sells, and that's where the grifters jump in on. It's a money making opportunity for them because if you can get a bunch of directionless people and point them into a direction, it's not a good direction, but it's a direction they might actually pay you for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is where. Um, this sort of thing is typically how like street gangs would recruit from disaffected young men who are poor. I mean, now granted, no internet anons are not going to go be in a street gang because that would mean going outside. <laughs> They're not that cool. They would probably be healthier if they joined a street gang. I, or I mean, I mean, that's, that's how Al Qaeda did their and ISIS did their recruiting. I'm not saying it's on the same level, it's but the it's communists the did their part. recruiting. It's how it's how groups like Antifa and radical political groups do it, and it's how some of these emerging like right wing fringe groups are trying to do it as well. Because there are some fringe, I guess well, you can call it. It's right. also be fair, how though, the feds do it. I was going to say half of them are federal agents. To be fair, so I mean they do have that going for them. I'm not even talking about like the the the, the like the Patriot uh, Patriot Front. front. Oh, the group of a hundred, a hundred uniformly fit, yeah, uh, a white ring, white white supremacists, because that's a thing that exists. Yeah, well, that's, I, that's the superior genes, Larry. You a marimut? As a mud, I, I wouldn't understand. <laughs> I am talking about how you have people. You know how in twenty twenty one the media and kind of came up with the scare term Christian nationalist to just kind of defame religious people. Because if you didn't want to go along with whatever the media was on board with, well, you're just a Christian nationalist. That was a good way of just painting people with this, this scary brush, right? 2021, you say? Hmm? Well, now there are various people unironically calling themselves that and writing books about it and saying we should be this, and and some of them are just fucking nuts. I was right? thinking about I was thinking about that the other day. If you have a country with a third of a billion people, wildly diverse people, and many of them are crazy. If you have your giant media establishment come out and say, there's a new group, it's X, you know, insert whatever here, and they're super powerful and super dangerous and 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 they make it they, they get our they get our panties in a bunch. We're so frightened of them, they're so powerful. Immediately you're gonna have a big bunch of people who are gonna you're gonna have a critical mass of people say, Whoa, cool. People I hate hate this and it's badass. And so it's just it, it's just astroturf, well, and again, people are easily manipulated. There's always going to be a group of people who, when sufficiently demonized and turned into a boogeyman, will take on the mantle of the boogeyman. 
they will gladly be whatever you want them to be because there's no other way to win. You've given them no, no way out, no winning option. It's just you, you're, you disagree with me on this. Therefore you were X, Y, and Z. And they're not going to agree with you on whatever the disagreement is, but no matter what they do, whether they are X, Y, or Z or not, you're, they're always going to be painted as X, Y, and Z. So they're going to be like, fine, I'll be the monster you want. I'll be the demon you summoned. Um, and they'll jump into it. Or uh, the other way around it is a little bit more, you know, not as like utterly malicious, but more uh, kind of, I don't want to say well-meaning, I guess ignorant is where they say, it's like, well, if these Jagaloons are calling me this because they hate that, and they're wrong about all this other shit and they're demonizing me for being, you know, for rightfully believing this one belief. Maybe they're wrong about uh, these other things. Maybe there is some validity to that shit. So I'm going to check that shit out and I'm going to be yeah. in with that stuff. So which you can always create your own boogeyman and there's always going to be somebody willing to jump in that role. Um, and so when you look at the way that online discourse is structured, you're never going to be at a, uh, a dearth of these kinds of people. You're always going to be able to find the, the villain you want. You know, they have that whole thing, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Nope. No, it's just your enemy of your enemy is your enemy's enemy. That doesn't yeah. necessarily mean he's your friend. Yeah. And, 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 and there's definitely something well, that you that see there. Me a lot. Like all those guys who were screaming at you about your racial impurity would also turn around and say, well, you shouldn't punch right. Like, yeah. like, we're not on the same team. Like, I like Larry's a conservative, and you're a racist fuckhead. They're not like the same thing. It's no. My my favorite part is uh, people will tell me like uh, the white nationalist guys that are all worried about fertility and, and that shit will yell at me for not being white enough, but then also tell me that I need to find like some you know blonde haired blue eyed chick to uh, start a family with so that we can preserve the white race. I was like, well, which one is it? Pick one. And also, why do I have to do all the work for you? Because you can't talk to girls. <laughs> why are you conscripting me? Go do go do that yourself. You'll have more fun doing it than once, watching me do it. Once Unless you do that, in which case, I want nothing to carry to do the load. Yeah. And the other thing is, and we were talking about this earlier today, that the, this whole obsession with race and es ethnicity is, a thorough, is not traditional. It is a thoroughly modern thing. Yeah that started sometime in the 18th century. Modern being the last couple hundred years, not yeah. like Yeah, post-enlightenment. Yeah, the just, just look at the history of the Indian tribes in, on this continent. They were adopting people from other, they were adopting prisoners from other tribes. They were adopting white people. It's like anybody, anything to make the tribe stronger. I mean, they didn't the, get the, the, damn modern, the, the current the concept of white people wasn't even really a thing a hundred years ago. I mean, there were, you had your wasps and then you had your, your Irish, Irish. and you had your Italians and your Portuguese and your Slavs. And they there were weren't even enough of us to have any good ethnic slurs. I'm they a little were, like, but these were not the same. They were not all. And your Germans and your Dutchers and. But yeah, yeah, actually, the, the thing it was actually really interesting because this is something I, I studied up a lot when I was writing uh, a Grim Noir in 1930s and go back to the 1850s. Uh, back then, and they they talk about like now these morons about the white race. Back then, is like the French race or the yeah. British race or the Italian race, and it was all more just like it was. It was like it was like the cultural touchstone, and and that was your nationality. No, and, even, even the Italians, oh, first off, Italy was not a country until like the 1870s or something yeah. like that. Before that, it was the Papal States and a shitload of other uh, states. And like the Neapolit Neapolitans and this, uh, the uh, Sicilians did not get along. Same with the Venetians. Same with the, uh, the Florentians. You know, it's like the Italian peninsula, there was no Italian identity until very, very recently when they all moved to America and started making food with meat. Um, that was that's where the Italian thing comes. They from. were united by carbohydrates. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's like, I can afford pasta now. What? I can't think of anything oh. better, really. To that's what brings Krasnovians together is love of the waffle. Yeah. Um, no, it's you look at. 
it's a manufactured this modern thing is just kind of a matter manufactured it's it's it goes back to the whole leftist thing where we got to put everybody in their stupid buckets for easy manipulation yep it's just stupid That's um true. i've seen this framed as like referred to as the rise of the woke right and that's fitting because it is the same it's the same mentality it's the same like grievance culture it's the same victim mentality it's the same like this the same obsession over race just from a different perspective yeah and, you know, equally I, I, annoying I, I, I take oh. issue with that, not because of the woke part. That's spot on. It's the right wing part because I'm looking at what they uh, believe and what they're advocating, and none of it is like anything wow. that the right wing has ever advocated for. Well, you notice how it's collectivist. Like, well, the Constitution was a mistake. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. The, uh, there's a strong element well, of collectivism in there. You know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's one of the things I've, I've done a lot of reading and kind of like uh, just internet browsing really on is these like these fringe like political ideologies, these people, they want, I, I watched an hour long video where five dorks fantasized about the rise of an American Caesar. Right. And one of these dorks was, um, some, some of these dorks have been in like high political positions. Like one of them was Michael Anton. He wrote that flight 93 election article. <coughs> and what, what, what do you think is going to happen when they realize that Caesar is Italian and Italian is very anti-American? It's not um, proper water. Well, that's, another I said, thing I was pointing out: the, these people complain, like, like that dude who complained about the the civnettery in the Spot Reps anthology. <laughs> what the? The, shit? Romans, yeah, that was the, the Romans were the nonsense. original civic nationalists because they just Romanized everybody. They didn't give a damn if they were Iberians. Uh, Gauls. Look at this empire of Egypt. It is now the province of Egypt. <laughs> and they are now Romans. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, these Hebrews are now Romans. Yeah. But one of the things... work out for them? I, so when I say, you know, it's from the right, you got to understand this kind of right wing, this isn't like American left, right? This is European style right wing politics. Right. Where it's the same big government. It's the same socialist type policies but there's also a big dose of like ethno nationalism thrown in there too well, well that's that's like uh the the national socialism or fascism uh of like italy and uh uh germany in the world war ii era, the early 20th century and communism the reason that those people were at their throats is because they all agreed on pretty much the same shit they only disagreed on whether it was the divine right of a specific nation of people or an international thing that you had to conquer the entire world to get the so. closer the closer two groups are the more likely they are to hate each other to the death over the differences yeah. why do you think we hate the army i mean look at shia and sunni yeah same thing i'm gonna say this actually brings it full circle what, what, what you're saying there it brings a full circle in that uh, okay so, so you, you have this, this offshoot movement. It, it, a lot of stuff comes back to politics, right? It, it, a lot of this stuff is, is, is astroturfed. So you got this movement that exists as a, a, a it's funneling off of the stuff that's, that's tr tr the traditional right, but it's also it's like, well, it doesn't matter anymore. I, I, one of the, what do conservatives conserve? Well, actually quite a bit because you don't live in a communist state yet. And you know they haven't cut all the all the genitals off your children yet. People uh, so, will so back people off. Remember twenty off. years ago when you were afraid that gun rights were going to completely evaporate? Exactly. I've seen and, people on Twitter argue with a straight face that you have no more rights here than you have in Russia or China. Yeah, They're I've seen this on Twitter. When you're Good Chinese, luck with that. you can't even get on Twitter. China, you and, can't even get on the internet. They There's their own literally internet. nothing stopping them from moving to China and and trying to become a Chinese citizen. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there is. It's called the Chinese, and they don't want. Yeah. Those I mean, I mean, they could go apply. Yeah. Actually, I, from what I understand, if you're a young adult, uh, if you're a, and you happen to be a Caucasian from the Western world, there is a growth opportunity industry in China right now to go over there and make commercials for the Chinese communist white... propaganda people. <laughs> yeah, you can go make. They call them white monkey jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? Um, that would be racist, but it's against white people. Okay. And the thing is, it's not. It, 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 
I actually I saw one the other day where it was like some some girl had a, a like some little white girl and had a video about how awful marriage is, right? They're just showing this girl how she, some guy goes to put a ring on her finger, but then she's like imagines like she's cooking and cleaning and she's like slaving away and it's all bad. And he goes through this whole big video and then this guy at the end has like, just just TikTok doomerism bullshit, right? And it's all it's it, it's viral on TikTok, like fifty bazillion hits. And this one dude goes, nah, this is a Chinese psyop. Watch the video again closely. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, crazy internet person. So I go back and I watch it again closely. And no, it really is. Like yeah. all the writing on the clothes in the background she's folding are Chinese. All the ingredients, everything she's cooking with, Chinese. Like everybody in the background you can see in the distant background is Asian. <laughs> the architecture is slightly wrong. And it's like, oh, shit, this really is a literal Chinese psyop pawned off on TikTok. And it's like, I, that was one of the, like, hey, point to the conspiracy people. I was like, you guys are right. I, I was, my initial knee jerk was wrong on that yeah. one. The, the best part is I've seen the polar opposite of that meme where it's like, it probably was like a legit just uh, shit poster. But it, uh, this girl who's, she's not unattractive. And she's like, I'm sitting here writing a 10 page paper instead of baking banana bread because some bitch wanted the quality. <laughs> but also apparently the that the working theory of that uh communist mouthpiece over there is that if you're single you don't have to like cook and clean i mean apparently i've yes. been single i like food didn't just appear like i had to vacuum my apartment i don't that's because you didn't live in a pod and eat, eat your bug uh, your bug paste Look, I have seen Chinese buildings and nobody lives in them, okay? <laughs> well, but the, some of the Mongolian nomads are starting to because they're just standing there. <laughs> we live in such a cool cyberpunk world. I mean, anti doomerism we just went right into cyberpunk 2077. No, you know, we no, I, I, Larry, I fucking disagree with this because I would have been cool with living in a cyberpunk uh, dystopia. I'd be like, we would have had the fucking fun 80s metal, you know, style or synth wave. You know, it would have been fucking badass. You'd be able to fucking like hack at a fucking terminal and shit. But no, instead we got this fucking everything went through the same school of marketing in our fucking Ivy League uh, college to have like the Apple fucking store by. Yeah, we got you know, instead of McDonald's Blade Runner, we got CalArts. <laughs> our, our cyberpunk utop dystopia fucking sucks. I was, oh, no, I didn't say it was a good one. one. But Mike is happy because he gets to stick lasers. He gets to stick lasers on a revolver now. <laughs> that, yeah. yeah, but he it's not a Mateba. It's not a Mateba, though. It's, Everybody knows that the, the peak that, cyberpunk revolver is a fucking Mateba auto revolver. That's an anime. That's an anime myth. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was in Firefly. It was in fucking Alien Isolation. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, we, we got ripped off. Cassette tapes and CRT monitors, okay? We're like this close. This yeah. close to a proper cyberpunk dystopia. If they just would have had the internet like it is now, like back in 1994, we would have been there. You know? Unless COVID-24 causes drastic mutations, and then we'll get Shadowrun. Yeah. You know, I, I will take Shadowrun over like the cyberpunk <laughs> 77 shit. I, I see the 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 original cyberpunk uh you know tabletop module and the uh the original core rule book and then I look at the CD project red shit I was like what the fuck Oh dude I played that game it was the buggiest damn thing oh. it was so buggy I spent yeah, the, I spent the last wild. third of the game with my hands my character's hands had like tendrils growing out of them to the bottom of the screen everything I did for like half the game you know, it's like, called Night City. Everything takes place in fucking San Diego during the day. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? It's what's funny is I played that game on Xbox and I didn't see any like big bugs at all. So, really? Yeah, really. Well, man, I, was a I heard they, they crashed the absolute shit out of it. I, I didn't buy it right away either. So, oh, yeah, uh, I, I got it. I got it. Opening day, it was garbage. I did find it kind That's of usually a bad idea anymore. I did find it hilarious that you got to pick your penis size in the game, though. Like. Penis one, penis that's, two. That's penis the important one, Polish thing. Yeah. Every every dude, every dude in America just got that clicker and just dragged it all the way to the right. <laughs> and first off, it's going to be measured in inches, not centimeters, because I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> 
We're going, we're going but, but now everybody in the audience really knows why we called this uh, this stream. Yeah. I, I tried to convince uh, Pete to invite Larry to talk about Doomerism, but really it's because... Larry, so now that Privateer Press is releasing War Machine Mark IV, are we going to get any more <laughs> of the Malcontents books? I mean... Probably not. Honestly, I wrote those. I wrote the. I mean, I told you this. I mean, I wrote those back when um, my career was a lot newer and I got paid a certain amount of money. Uh, but those are by far my least selling books. And I don't know if they could afford me now. You know, that's well, the thing. It's not like now if you sell sponsor books. this Mark IV release, you might, you might be able to be like, all right. Yeah, yeah. Hand I mean, if they suddenly the came into piles of money and wanted to pay me like real money to do a, a, th a third and final trilogy, and I totally would because that's some of the best stuff I've ever written. Actually, I think I agree. Great, <laughs> I'm not saying your book. other stuff is bad. I'm just saying like that those two books, especially the difference between the first book and the second book, where the second book I was like, oh, this guy's the main character now. And then oh, yeah. by the end of the second book, I was like, "This guy is so much better than, than the first one." I took, I because I, I took the proverbial like wet behind the ears lieutenant, yeah, and and and, and made him. Uh, he turned into a real leader, and that was just really what that was about. Yeah. So, so for everybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, Larry basically took Lieutenant Gorman and turned him into Corporal uh, uh, Hicks. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, but by, by by the end of that book, I mean this guy is all in. Uh, doing the right thing. He stands by his dudes no matter what. And it's great. And plus, we, we have giant robots fighting werewolves. I mean, come yeah. on. He, he can choose any weapon, you say. For... That is one of the better twists I've come up with. <laughs> yeah. And he says that, and he's like, you sure? <laughs> he's like... <laughs> For all the prospective authors out there, that is what you call a character arc, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Jesse and, Barrett is in the chat, and he's saying, uh, "Crowd, a uh, crowdsource book three. I actually had the idea of uh, Larry of us crowdsourcing, buying Privateer Press for Larry just so he could finish that book because at the time it seemed doable, but now the yeah. release is new. You know. I mean, honestly, because it's not my IP, and I love those characters, and I had a lot of fun with it, but I don't own it, so that's I mean, not my not my thing. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not one of those authors. When I start stuff, I tend to finish it, but sometimes it's just a business decision outside of my hands. You know what I mean? What if you did own it? Well, yeah. If, I, if, <laughs> if you guys want to spend several million dollars and buy a game company in Seattle for me, yeah, sure, I guess. I, I, I'd, I'd do that. And no, crowdsource, yes. Little, I mean, <laughs> a little outside of my budget. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I got, if, 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 if like one of my fans turns out to be like uh, uh, Elon Musk is listening to this right now and he's like, I'd like to read the third book. <laughs> Just call me. All right. That's fine. I'll we'll work something Elon, out. Did you have retweet the link for, or excuse me, repost the link for this so we get up the views a little bit? I'd appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, Elon. Jeez, man. Elon's really slacking with that whole thing. No, I can't talk trash to Elon. I love Elon because he finally got me speedy internet out here to the middle of friggin' nowhere. So, for oh that, yeah, no, I no. Be Everybody says he's ruining Twitter and that like this site is on a downhill. I was like, I don't know. Compared to Did before, you before? He it, it's amazing. Yeah. Did they see the nightmare hellscape that was Twitter before? It's a thousand percent better. No, because they were shadow banned. I mean, yeah, I was. <laughs> it's just dumb in different ways. It's yeah, like, it's still dumb. Don't get me wrong, because we're talking to a bunch of idiots all the time. And I mean, it, he's by, talking by, all means, by all means, go use Threads instead. Like, he, as a non-American, I think the Constitution is a wonderful thing. That's true, because there are people in other countries who would absolutely love to have those rights. Yes, but that involves talking to other people and getting their take on it. Whereas these people, they're just on Twitter. They're not. They're not giving a back and forth. They're just yelling at and they've, each other. They've also, they also decided that they're living in a dystopia, right? They live in the most prosperous and richest society in human history. They have it better than like 99% of people in the world. Yeah. Now, the thing is, though, even by pointing that out, though, you say that, and I know what the response is immediately. By pointing out that life is pretty good, they immediately flip it around and say, well, well, you're acting like like we should just grin and bear it, you, 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 that we can't improve things or that we're not allowed to complain. It's gaslighting well, because I can recognize that life is good and we're blessed and we got awesome stuff. And there's still bad stuff in the world that we can fix and improve. I mean, to be fair, though, we can do with a little bit less of their complaining. I mean, no, 
Yeah. Larry, Larry, that take is too nuanced. And also the other thing is too simple. So it's. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you can't, can't win. it's too nuanced simultaneously, too nuanced and simplistic at the I'm, same time. Well, it's not your simplistic nuance, Larry. Well, these guys, <laughs> will, they, they misunderstand on purpose. They're, they're deliberately obtuse. Oh, so what you're saying is this, and, and, and it's just complete bullshit. I think they're so clever too when they do this. Shit. All right, they're they're, they're convinced. You have incredible hubris because they're con convinced of their own wisdom and knowledge and education, even though it's pretty obvious they haven't read all the stuff they keep trying to. Uh, Plus, they're also like 21. Like, oh man, I am totally blowing these normies' minds right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it, it's like when, a, like when an eighteen-year-old or a fifteen-year-old, like a uh, Reddit atheist, this is like, oh, I don't have the heart to fucking tell my eighty-year-old religious neighbor the truth. Like, I, I'm pretty sure she's seen some shit you haven't. Like, yeah. she's probably been around the block a couple more times than you, and has come to this conclusion through more life experience than you have. Yeah, I'll I'll believe that across the street burned witches when she was your age. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's like, oh, no. Yeah. We're the granddaughters of the witches you can burn. It's like, I'm the grandson of the one who was burning witches. So, <laughs> it's like, back off, dude. I'm not, it's not even, I mean, I'm not even bagging on anybody's religious belief. Believe, believe whatever you want, because but, but you got to believe it's something. Usually, the people that, except voodoo people. don't believe in that shit. Usually, the people calling out that we're the granddaughters of the witches you couldn't burn. Their grandmother was usually yeah. uh, at Mickey church the devil. three times a week. Yeah. <laughs> You, yeah, I saw that one. And your, it's like, bitch, your grandma says the rosary eight times a day. Yeah. She thought <laughs> Mickey Mouse was satanic. <laughs> which turns out she was right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, which all the people who were saying like, uh, which, you know, it's like, oh, D&D &D is satanic. And we laughed at them. Now look at Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, uh, I heard the penis slider on that is really intense. <laughs> no, you only get like only so many <laughs> options and it's just to change it so that it should not oh. be where it is it's like you don't get to choose your sizes or anything well, is, my, play, my play through i played as a good boy so it's like uh which got yeah i didn't see too much of that stuff anyways it's like it's just in character you get like a two like a two-pronged barbed duck penis what's even the point to be fair i played a lot of D, &D. i've been in a lot of campaigns and not once in all the years of D, &D i've played with all sorts of different groups did the nature of any character's penises ever come up? Not once. Not once in all these many years. I don't care if you're playing a dragonborn. Character sheet. <laughs> I mean, we had uh, like friggin' hippogriffs. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I don't care what your genitals look like. This now, is not a... I've, I've never actually played D and D, but uh, I know what's happening if I ever get invited to. <laughs> There's a ah, school, there's my character's a name is Pew Chinas. He's gonna pick character. up the character sheet and it's gonna unfold and then unfold again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those teletape things from the whole. <laughs> oh man, that's it. I did play with Brad Torgerson in a, in a couple campaigns, and Brad Brad will go sexy time with the NPCs, and I'll just be like, "Dude, you're taking that off screen. You can tell me how that worked out later." As the like, GM, I'm not role playing this with you. Yeah, I was like, you re remember, I'm the GM. I'm voicing all the NPCs. We're not doing. Yeah, that. yeah. So when he starts flirting with flirting with the girl, and I'm like, roll, roll to see how you're doing. All right, pretty good. We'll take that off screen. You let me know how that went. Yeah. <laughs> which worth it? Is, you're which afraid to commit a player in a party. With I a am. That, what was that? He goes, I'm afraid to commit. And I'm like, I am. <laughs> yeah. What's worse is when you're a player in the group and there's another player doing that and the GM doesn't stop. You're just like, oh fuck. Hey, uh, I'm I'm gonna go take a break. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab a soda. Oh, you guys <laughs> want anything? From the yeah. store. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not just going to the fridge. I'm yeah, leaving. I'm going I'm going down to the Walmart in town, 30 minutes away. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really weird vibe in here right now, guys. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Dare you enter my magical realm? Well, get, getting back to the subject we were uh, originally talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, how is it that I'm the one trying to underail the conversation here? Put your this penis slider away. Because, yeah, because I'm, I'm always derailing it. That's, I hate being on the rails, Pete. 
Uh, Trains are too European. <laughs> That's so, another thing. The dude on the internet, <laughs> have you noticed the amount of people who are just like, I fucking uh, hate roads and cars. We need to bring back trains. It's like you, you know what people used besides trains when the trains were the the, the cutting edge of uh transportation? Horses. Roads. Horses and their feet. Yeah. You can see out my window. Public transportation is not a thing here. Yeah. No. Here's not a thing here either. Here's the thing, right? They complain like, oh, America is just lagging behind Europe and Japan in rail travel. Like, no. America had the... America, but we're leading them in World War network. victories. America's railroad network was the marvel and envy of the world in like 1910. Right, we already did that. It peaked. Then we then we started getting cars, and after World War II, we built a highway network because we're a gigantic country and we're all spread right. out. And highway system works better than trains for that particular that's, purpose, right? That's bringing these people up again. Didn't do that because Europe was bombed to rubble in World War II, and they were all poor. They couldn't. That said, it. I do love the autobahn. I don't know if it's actually worth a damn. But I had a I had a Volvo uh, diesel station wagon, and I discovered that it can go 120 miles an hour, no problem. <laughs> and I kept that sucker pegged. No, the Germans. Oh, yeah, are, I'm all for highways, just not speed limits. That's all. The Germans are like the only Europe. Not the I don't know if they're the only, but they're like one of the main European countries that are just like nine on the whole. They got the. They don't like talk about trains anymore, you know. Yeah. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe made a few train jokes uh, passing through Frankfurt uh, going to uh, work. But uh, <clears throat> trains are just for transporting cattle and only cattle. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the other thing is these people have no sense of scale. The, the continental Europe as a whole is still smaller than the continental United States. Yeah, I, I think... It if you take Texas and Alaska and put them together, it's the size of Europe. Yeah. Well, they, like, they don't understand the trains kind in of Japan. Uh, I mean, Japan's the size of California, roughly. Yeah. I mean, well, they're a little bit bigger, I think. Distances involved. And Either the that or they're anti human weirdos who want to cram everybody into mega trains? city two. Trains? You wanted to say it, didn't you, Pete? Went straight German on us. Well, some of them probably do. Yeah. Some of them, I guarantee some of them do. But like, you know, the, yeah. the anti-human strain to some of this ideology that's floating around these days is rather concerning. Yeah, leading into that, Europeans also don't understand summer either. Because no. whenever they come over to the U.S. during summer, it's like, oh yeah, we'll go on a, a hike in Arizona when it's 95 degrees out, which they don't even know that number because it's in Fahrenheit. And it was like, oh, we'll, we'll bring a water bottle with us. And it's like two uh, German tourists found dead from heat stroke in in Arizona. It's like, yeah. My wife was uh, my wife was shopping one day in Ogden, and she was at a store, and the people ahead of her had uh, German accents, and they were talking about what their plans were for the day, and they're like, let's just drive down to St. George for lunch and see the Red Rocks, and uh, my wife's like, you're not driving down to St. George for lunch unless lunch is tomorrow. <laughs> They had no concept, like, but it's right there on the map. And she's like, "Yeah," I was like, "Like, like, literally, this state is the size of your country." Oh, you know, that's in miles, not kilometers. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. They don't. It's it's like you put one of your books, Larry. Uh, Europeans don't appreciate how big America is, and Americans don't appreciate how old things in Europe are. You know, it's yeah. crap is old there. We're getting again. The, there's this perception of knowledge and therefore wisdom, which are not the same thing. Um, that just doesn't exist. But because they have the internet, they think it does. Well, this gets back to the original topic too. There's a shallowness of understanding uh, where you can like a lot of the guys I was arguing with is a very vapid, shallow understanding of life and. A lot of it was lack of experience. A lot of the young dudes. A lot of the guys were just—they weren't—they weren't young. They were guys in their thirties uh, who'd been around. 
but they weren't necessarily successful people. And because of that, they had this kind of like attitude, but it was like, like very limited understanding of human interaction, very shallow. Like, and then they get into the stereotypes and we talk about the racial stereotypes, but they stereotype the women and they talk about how all women are this, all women are that, um, all girls today believe this. It's like, no, dude, you're talking about a country of a third of a billion people. So you're a, 160 million women, give or take, you probably have 30 or 40 million of them are in your in your dating age. And so you're telling me that 30 or 40 million women all believe the same thing. They're, they're just automatons who they, they all believe the same thing of their generation. That's dumb. That's, that's just the well, dumb. it's not if you consider the science on pair bonding and all that shit, Larry. Yeah, it's like, dude, shut up! It's like, it's like you got a lot of swirlies in high school for a reason, okay? You know, apparently not enough. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, and it's like this, this stuff. If it's like, it's like, get out of your own ass, pull your head out of your ass, realize you don't know everything, realize that life is more complicated than you're ascribing these dumb, simplistic things. It's funny because these same guys were like, like. They attack anything that was like an old traditional belief system. Is like, oh, that's just boomer, 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 boomer. I was like, mother, no, I, I try not to swear too much on the air, but uh, I was. Don't 40, worry, I, I'll do that for you. Yes. All right, motherfucker, it's I'm 48 years old, right? I've been around, and, and, but I'm not a boomer. I'm Gen X. Back the fuck off, all right? I'm not the guy that screwed up everything and raised your taxes, all right? I'm like the most. My generation is the one that's been robbed of political power more than any other in American history. So back the it, fuck up. You know why? It's because Gen X were the original doomers. They thought, oh, we're all going to die in a nuclear war. Guess we were. And that's the thing. We at least had a nuclear war to worry about. <laughs> we, we act, I, I grew up next the to Castle Air Force Base. They're to the nuclear war, Larry. They need to bring it back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we grew, I grew up next to Castle Air Force Base, and they talk about duck and cover drills. We didn't do those. That would be pointless where I lived. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many nukes aimed at us. They're like, you you can hide under the desk, kids. It ain't going to matter. You know, well, we couldn't afford those fancy steel desks. That, that, reminds, <laughs> me, that, that, that reminds me of something, though. The uh, There is a certain lack of, like, his, uh, there's no, with a lot of these, uh, the Doomer perspective, there's not a sense of history and not a sense of perspective or scale. No, there's no. Stuff, right? Like, like I said, they think they live in like this awful, terrible dystopia. And, and maybe if you never, if you never back away from your computer screen, it, it seems that way. But like, go out and get a day job. Go talk to normal people who aren't online all day, and things might actually seem kind of normal. Uh, the other day, the other day, I kind of went off on this, and but it was actually not about this particular topic with the incels and whatnot. But it was about the American dream, because everybody's talking about how the American dream is ruined. The American dream is impossible. The American dream is and a lot of it is because, like, what their idea of the American dream was, was this really dumb, shallow, materialistic, out of context, where, like, I, I turned 20 and I should just have everything my parents had. You know what I mean? Or, and, and, yeah, life is harder. It is it, it, Life, uh, the economy sucks right now. That's what happens anytime you put Democrats in charge, the economy turns to crap. I mean, we should know this by now. But I, I think one of the reasons I, I can't be a doomer is I grew up on a farm. You know, I grew up on a dairy farm. Life sucked. Life was crap. Like, it was freaking hard. We worked our asses off, and we had nothing. Poverty, and, like real poverty yeah, was like, in, like, in this country. Like a, and that's not about, we were about as poor as you could be in America outside of being kidnapped by hill folk, right? We were fucking poor. And, you were and, the hill folk. Well, I mean, except I live in the San Joaquin Valley. It's very flat. <laughs> okay, so you're the valley folk. I'm the valley folk. We were the cow people. Well, uh, you know, we're the people of the Holstein. <laughs> but, I, and the thing is, I've seen it with my own eyes. And, I, and so I've lived the American dream. I came, okay, so my grandparents came here with nothing. My grandpa rode over in a freaking steamship with nothing. Scraped up enough money doing some really awful things. Oh, I'm talking awful, awful things. Some of this stuff Let is like work, family mostly. legend. We don't even know if it's true. I, I keep beat the shit out of a lot of people to collect gambling debts, right? Um, you know, and, Arthur so, Morgan, did he get... <laughs> and, and so the thing is, I mean, but then he, what, what happened? He bought a handful of cows. He 
he was able to save enough. He moved to California, bought a handful of cows, and started started milking cows and breeding cows. And, and and then my dad had more than he did. And my dad struggled. My dad had all sorts of problems and, and, and failures, many many failures. I started higher than my dad started, and we were fucking poor. Like I talk to these guys like now that they're like with their doomerism and like what they think life is. And I was like, and I, and I like, oh yeah, you walked uphill both ways to school. It's like, no, we didn't have hills, fucker, but everything else is right. And, you know, but the thing is, my kids now are starting from a higher position than I was. And I am so excited to see what they can accomplish. Because I start, I mean, my grandpa started here. My dad started here. And I'm trying to figure my camera. I started here and my kids start here. I mean, where are they going to go? What are they going to do? There they, is, they might fail. There they is might this, crash and burn. There's this myth about mid-century America, about the baby boomer generation, that they, that you were just like 21 years old, you got a job at a factory, and then you just bought a house. Yeah. And you had two cars, and you had all the bought, and it was just easy, and everything. Like, like you know, they didn't have half the luxury. It's revisionist history horseshit. Okay, yeah, Grandpa Grandpa did buy a house on his factory labor, and it was 900 square feet, okay? And he had a, he had a shitty car that would be – and they had they had a refrigerator. <laughs> and in the 1980s, we bought a VCR for our TV that was this big and made of wood and had three channels, okay? And, and so the, the revisionist history stuff, it's like – You guys can go – you guys can go talk to someone who was alive back then. This okay, is I'll, I'll put my accounting hat on for a second. Do you know why Grandpa was able to get a job in a factory and work his whole life in that same factory? It's because we bombed the living fuck out of every factory in Europe right before that. Yeah. And we had this kind of golden era where all of our competition around the world had been just bombed into ruin. And we were it. And we had just ramped up to the greatest manufacturing history are uh, the greatest manufacturing capacity in human history, and we were the people who built everything for the entire world. I, uh, you know, that didn't last. Well, no shit, because everybody else isn't stupid, and they're going to rebuild, and they did. So you're saying we have to bomb them again, Larry? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Starting with Canada. The one time that meme actually works. <laughs> and I, I have a, I have a, I have a 13 step process. <laughs> Which if you, you can subscribe to my newsletter. A month, yeah. <laughs> No, it, it, the thing is, this stuff isn't – okay, the, the past is a different country. Was some stuff better? Yes. Was some stuff worse? Yes. And a lot of it depends on who you were. Um, the, other it, thing, it, the other thing, it goes back to that revisionist history thing, is where do these people get their ideas of the past from? It's not history books. It's not first uh, primary uh, sources. It's not firsthand accounts from their parents because they only have one of them, uh, which it's from media. From that time frame, yeah. which were all sponsored by product placements. How many times and, do you see like some meme where it's like a, an advertisement from the fifties and like, why, what happened? Why isn't this a thing? Yeah. And we're like, it wasn't a big man. Not everybody did have that. That's why they were trying to sell it to them. Fucking or, or uh, which, which guy? It's everything. Or you'll see the uh, the Pizza Hut nationalism, right? Which I oh. agree. Pizza Huts used to have character. Now they don't, and it's because Dude, everybody was going to Pizza fucking... Hut as a kid and had video yeah. games. It, it used to be an arcade and like, like an, a brick oven thing, but it's changed because everybody went to the same fucking marketing, uh, you know, curriculum in college, and they all got hired by these companies. And that's why everything looks the same. But the whole Pizza Hut nationalism thing is like it's like they'll show a picture of a 7-Eleven in the 70s like we used to be a country a real country it's a proper like, country that guy yeah. it's a fucking um, ad man dude like, it was an ad it was put yeah. together by a Don Draper motherfucker from, from Madison Avenue of an idealized thing also yeah. it was the 70s Talk oh to anybody who lived <laughs> through the 70s oh, oh no here's one okay now so I just wrote a book I just wrote a book set in the 70s with me and Jason Cordova it comes out in October right and the funny thing is, I'm really young enough. The novel. I, I was born in the I was born in the mid '70s, but I'm but I'm old enough that I I, I grew the, so the people I grew up with were the people who came to adulthood in the '70s, right? Yeah. I mean, like most of the people I grew up around, like a lot of Vietnam vets and that kind of thing. And so the other day, I was seeing somebody talk about hoflation. One of these doomers was talking about hoflation, where your grandpa 
had to work half as hard to get a woman 10 times better or whatever, right? No, and I was like, wait, 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 back up. I was like, your grandpa wasn't, your, for how old you guys are, your grandpa isn't from the 1940s. Your grandpa is from the 1960s and 1970s. You're telling me that there wasn't hoes and sexual immorality in the 70s? <laughs> Dude, you <laughs> sheltered motherfucker. Do you have it's, no concept of, it's also, of American it's, history? His grandpa uh, went over to Vietnam, came back, and got spat on by those hoes. Like, yes, what? because once again, everybody's different. And it's yeah. like, so was every woman in the 1970s the bra burning, uh, uh, you know, like sexual revolution? We got the birth control pill now, hippy dippy bullshit. No, they weren't. Because why? Human beings are diverse. And I'm talking actual diversity, like diversity of thought, diversity of morality, diversity of beliefs. Not this bullshit, skin deep fucking nonsense. Yeah. But yeah, and so, but, but, but you tell me there weren't hoes in the 70s? That's literally yep. where the word comes from. <laughs> so in, in 1970, do you want to know what the most popular music genre in America was? 1970. Was it rock and roll? Was it disco? Was it blues? No, it was gospel music. Okay. It's like, the same time, the same year that Manson was out there fucking killing people was the same year that America's most popular music genre was gospel music. Okay. It's like, but nobody remembers that because that's not what all the media companies nowadays want to remember about the 70s. They want to remember the hippie shit. They want to remember the fucking counterculture stuff. The like, hippies. For a moment, if some of the stuff that went on during the 60s and 70s was happening now in our current like social media environment. Well, we got Jimmy Carter again. The humongous riots. No, he's he's twice as big as Jimmy Carter, Larry. Have you seen that photo? B five O fum. I smell the blood of a peanut farmer. I mean, like the, the, the terrorist attacks, the, the bombings, the hijackings. They would be saying America is about the how many Tim Pool will be civil warring so hard. Right, dude. Okay, I'll actually scroll after you put that up. I actually, scroll through his YouTube thing the other day, looking for something, and it was civil war, civil war, civil war. Civ Quit fucking doom profiting. We all know. Okay, everybody here, we understand the concept of what civil war in America would entail. I mean, I know Pete and I have we, we've talked about this. We've talked about oh, this yeah. on the show before. Wrote a book about it. You don't want it. We don't also, fucking want it. Also, Larry, it's funny for us because coming from the gun culture. We were speculating about this crap like 20-something years ago. Oh, yeah. 1990s, and, we were talking about this stuff. Oh, yeah. and, to see all, and to see all like these... And we were the new guys and in the 1990s. All, and to see we were all talking these, about this uh, stuff. To use their own word, normies, like, like come around talking about their own version of the shit hit the fan scenario. Like, oh, first time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, these guys are all like... Oh, just you normie boomers are like, motherfucker, we know what looties are. <laughs> oh, look. Okay. Like, oh, look, they just learned about Ruby Ridge. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, the other, that's the other thing is people are like, oh, fuck, America's now a police state. I was like, I, I'm a 90s kid. All right. Like, I remember seeing Waco on the TV as it was happening. Okay. Well, the greatest you mistake. Because it was a standard definition CRT TV, but, you know. I mean, it's still get. I mean, don't get me wrong. We have gotten more statist and authoritarian, mostly because technology has allowed for it. Right. And that's that's the real cyberpunk stuff we're getting into, which really sucks. And once again, but not, not do repeal. We don't know how all this is going to shake out. Will everything get worse forever? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. So but nothing is, ever does last forever. Well, the world didn't end. The world keeps not ending. I remember, so one time, many, many, many years ago, this is getting a religious thing. So many, many, many years ago, when I was a, when I was a young adult, I remember talking to this guy at church. And we lived in a little town in, in uh, central Utah, west central Utah, Delta, Utah, middle of nowhere. And this dude was talking about all this land that had been developed since. And how his grandpa had originally been the guy farming it back in like the late 1800s. And this is an older guy. And uh, he had a chance yeah, to buy... He had a chance to buy like 100,000 acres of land for nothing, like basically nothing. It was it, back, because remember, this is Western Desert, Utah land. And, you, and this guy said, and he had the money and he passed. 
and, and he, did, he didn't buy it. And uh, years later, when he and they asked him at the time, was like, why, why didn't you buy this, Grandpa? And he's like, well, the world was so bad, I thought the second coming was going to be any day now. So why would I invest long term in this land? Hard you know, world. and it's like uh, <laughs> it didn't end. Yeah, but the yeah, thing is, yeah. people keep thinking everything's going to end. But 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 okay, the Roman Empire fell, but the fall of the Roman Empire generations live their lives during the fall of the Roman Empire. Uh, you it know, took a long time. It took yeah. a long damn time. What will happen with America? I don't know. And anybody who says they know is full of shit, and will sell you their their um, they'll they'll, they'll sell you their 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 newsletter for nineteen ninety nine. Yes. Yeah. Anybody who says they know how conventional warfare works is also full of shit because all of them have been wrong about that little conflict over in the Europe right now. Oh yeah, every every expert, every armchair expert I saw going into that turned out to be wrong because shit changes and it's complicated, and people huh. are, people aren't stupid. And complicated. Creative. That's. That's the thing that key people keep missing is that, and I, I see this in multiple groups of off-thinking weirdos. They all want to super simplify everything when it doesn't work because yeah. well, there's a lot of moving parts in anything. And like these... The whole, oh, if, if we just have a Caesar, then everything's going to be great. It's like, just first, of all, like for, first of all, it doesn't work that way, and it never has. I mean, look at what happened to the original Caesar. Yeah, I was going to say, the he, Romans didn't like their Caesar very much. He was dictator for life for a very short time. Yeah. Um, now, furthermore, as, as I've I've had to point out before, whenever somebody thinks that, oh, well, we've got to try something new. Guess what? There is nothing new. Every political system under the sun has been tried. Most of it around the Aegean Sea about 2,500 years ago. You know what's funny about that, though, is that's kind of like why Mike does his stuff, where he goes hunting through Twitter and that stuff for fringe political stuff, is because he's still trying to find a new like political uh, ideology and uh, a government system to feature in one of his books because he's always been like, everything's always been taken. It's always a confederacy of this, a federation of this, uh, the kingdom of this, the empire of that. You know, the, what there, else is there? There is a depressingly small number of words for a government in the English language. It's kind of sad. <laughs> it's and there, there's only a limited amount of ways that they function because all the stuff that's not that doesn't function and it doesn't make it into uh, history as a functional government. And that's, that goes back to the revisionist history or this idea that, uh, that the past was so much easier and better than we have now is because that's the survivor bias, All right? You're only hearing about the guys who made it. Okay. Like the, the guys that didn't buy the farm, you know, and just, or they, they bought the farm and nothing was was on it. It was completely unusable land and it wasn't big enough to sell to the military. Well, so it's like, stuff, all right, I guess I'm broke. I'll have to go do something else, you know? Some stuff gets better. Some stuff gets worth. Some stuff just changes and it's not necessarily better or worse. And that's just the nature of things. But like the Doomer type philosophy is like, well, I'm not going to try it. It's one thing I've seen on right and left is I can't imagine bringing kids into this world. Which is the stupidest thing ever, because guess what? The world's going to go on, no matter what. And also, um, if they can't imagine bringing kids into this world, why are they worried about the fertility of their fucking 18-year-old future prospective wife? I, I, call, I call that one guy the uterus whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have to speak up, because he's not going to get that close to a uterus. <laughs> My, you know, my main contention with that again was like, guys, before you start worrying about her fertility and all that, maybe worry about actually seeing the JJ. You know, <laughs> try and get the the first date first, then maybe one step at a time, fellas. Yeah, this guy's trying to get to like eighth or ninth base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, his methods are weird because, like, I imagine his opening line is like, "Hey, have you heard about this VTuber? Come here, watch this with me." What hey, but I gotta say, and find people with equivalent moral values. So if that's what it takes, 
I was like, oh, you also subscribe to the Real Ultimate Power newsletter? <laughs> <laughs> you um, go, go ahead. <laughs> First of all, you need to go chuck your roommate into the horror raptor. Um, second of all, ha have him go look at fucking England. Prince Charles, the global warming activist, is king now. How's that working out for him? Oh my gosh, we had we had one of these guys. We had one yeah. of these guys talking about George how, like, Washington every... said no to kingship, and therefore we have what? And everything's been screwed up since then. Yeah. And this guy is like, because I because like, oh, that's one of the things I respect George Washington so much for was George Washington could have been king and said no. Respect. Just like Mr. President instead of Your Majesty the President. Because he just wanted to be a dude. Respect. And this dumbass is like, well, if George, maybe if he said yes, we wouldn't be where we are today. And I can't, I think it might have been you, Coop, and you're like, yeah, because countries with monarchs are so much better off, Prince yeah, yeah. Andrew. <laughs> no, no monarchy has ever been degenerate. Well, yeah, I was like... like you know, he, he tried to come back with that and be like, are you calling George Washington a, a degenerate? I was like, no. No, stupid. I mean, I, it's, it goes back to that being deliberately obtuse. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. to interpret what you said in the dumb fuckiest way possible. That it's, never works. It's like Nobody they, is dumb enough to believe that. It's like when they make the argument that, well, oh, oh, your society and your constitutionalism and classical liberalism is what allowed all of this to happen. So, if it, yeah, well... The old world before that allowed classical liberalism to happen. So, I mean, and way worse than that too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's like it's like I'm not a fan. Okay, because it, once again, it's like some stuff gets better, some stuff gets worse. I'm not a big fan of a bunch of degenerate weirdo pervert molester weirdo scumbags, but the fact that those people exist doesn't negate the entire rest of your society. Because every society has some element of deviant, weirdo, pervert, scumbaggery. Everybody, always, ever. There, there has never been a utopian society perfectly free of weirdos. And, 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 and don't get me wrong, I'm not a big fan of them, okay? And we have far too many. But once again, that's going into the whole left and right paradigm thing that we've got going on right now. Where some stuff gets worse, some stuff gets better. But that's one of those things we can make better. That's one of those things that I'm actually seeing that is getting better. Ten years ago, uh, people who take a stand in the culture war would get shouted down. And we'd be really feeling lonely out there, you know what I mean? And now we've got people actually standing up. We've got parents fighting back at school board meetings. We got This is a thing that's actually actively getting better, where more people are noticing and more people are caring. And, and so it's like, it's like, stop with the fucking doom. It's like, get out of the way of the people who are fighting back. Let them fight back. Ah. It, it, it's it's like the guy in your platoon that uh, just checks out. and Like, he won't patrol, he won't man his post, he won't do anything. But he also won't fucking leave. So, it's like, he, he's, you're stuck with him, and he just drags down the rest of the, the, the team and the unit. And you hate that motherfucker more than you hate the enemy. <laughs> yeah, and in, in wartime, they're the one that has the. You know, it's like the, the 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 hand grenade rolled into his tent on accident. Yeah, you know that 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 was an accident, Larry. Don't don't put that yeah. on me. Morale that increased. <laughs> yeah. But so I pulled up this uh, this guy that we were talking about, and I want to belabor the point just because uh, there's another interesting aspect to this stuff. So <clears throat> you mentioned uh, that you know. George Washington said no to being uh, a monarch. And this kid says, uh, Washington said no, and here we stand with child uh, trans drag shows. Just great. <clears throat> Implying that if George Washington decided to become king and, and leave a legacy of, of royals, we wouldn't <clears throat> have that. Meanwhile, Europe, which is like, f what, 50% monarchy still? Like, they all have this shit Whoa. too, and they had it before us. We learned it from watching you, Dad. This is where this shit happened because that's where the fucking communist active measures started and then got exported over to us. Okay? Everybody's like, like, oh, base Japan and base Europe. It's like they've had this shit way longer than us. All right? That's why I'm telling these kids to stop watching anime. There's All no right? sexual deviancy in Germany. Uh, or Japan. <laughs> Okay, and I like, too, the simplification. But they, they have no concept of what the rest of the world is like. So they want to say, like, oh, America's, you know, bottom of the barrel. We've gone downhill. Why can't we be more like Europe? I was like, oh, 
we were more like Europe. That's how we got this way. Well, I like too the simple. Like people talk about the simplification of history thing. I like how we went from George Washington to, to now, Jackson. and there was like nothing in between. <laughs> yeah, it was you just know? it was also, all up, it was all up to George. He was a single fork in the road. Yeah, no, man, about no. 240 years, give or take. Uh, yeah, no monarch has ever been deposed and replaced with a different kind of person uh, between then. Just ask France. Yeah, I mean, well, what? I mean, plus the thing is, what mon monarchy? You're rolling the dice, man. <laughs> I mean, when you're rolling the dice on all politicians. Come here, I'm the guy that hates most politicians, right? I hate them all, and people are like, "I'm a big fan of so and so." It's like I, he's an acceptable employee. <laughs> You know what I mean? But, but like, dude, it's a monarch. There has been so many bad monarchs throughout <laughs> history. Yeah. How friggin' stupid do you have to be to think that that is, like, a guaranteed oh, yeah. way to go? Larry, uh, uh, Mike brings up a good point. That dude that uh, replied about George Washington uh, saying is, no and therefore... I think this is the same guy. This is a different guy. Okay. This is, but, this is somebody I encountered, I think, but... Yeah, uh, which guy? They have a Substack about how like because of, fucking, of course he has a Substack. Yeah, his name is Outgoing Misanthrope. Um, oh, I've seen his his nonsense before. Yeah, and uh, it, it is long winded. We're talking about like an officer giving an op or, uh, order, long winded. Like, well, is it officer giving an op order, non -win long winded, or sergeant major on Friday afternoon, long winded? They're both long-winded, but it's also very retarded, so I would say more officer. Depends on the sergeant major. How are we, how are we this popular amongst the military crowd? <laughs> oh man, I'm just a cake, I'm just a token cake eating civilian contractor here. <laughs> well, again, getting into the whole there, there's there's more there's a couple of sides on the whole oversimplification of things. Is as Americans, we have the tendency, all monarchs are bad. Just Monarchy is should. in it inherently in and of itself evil. History doesn't bear that out either. No. You know, because no, you'll occasionally get a sage king and they will make the history books. Trust me, you'll you'll know about them. But that goes back yes, to that survivor bias thing. Yeah, I, again, I'm I'm not a monarchist. I got into an argument with some trads years and years ago who insisted that the only the, the only Christian form of governance was an anointed king. They really didn't like it when I pulled out the passages from the book of, uh, I think it was 1 Samuel, uh, warning against what would happen if they insisted on getting a king. Yeah, how'd that but, work out for them, Pete? <laughs> yeah, not well. Uh, yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't like it, especially since they didn't have an answer to it. Right. But, but that that's the thing. Sometimes you'll get a Solomon. Sometimes you'll get uh, King Herod. So even Solomon didn't end all that well. No. But another thing that, but another thing I've noticed since a lot of these young men are all about noticing things with three sets of parentheses. Um, are you paying attention now? <laughs> right. Is um, paying attention longer than you've been alive, kid. A lot of the a lot of these dudes are very adamantly anti-war, like like the left was in two thousand five anti-war, right? Hysterically so. Which do what you want, right? Think what you want. But at the same time, if you're going to turn around and, and like simp for actual fascism or a monarch or and all this, and then you say you're like complaining about war, like bruh. Especially if you're actually like pro fascism, like war and fascism go like this. That's like half the point of fascism is war. Like peanut butter and jelly, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, Spain has a history with that. It's like. And, um, imagine ending up like the Spanish. Okay. Like everybody's saying that, like, we need to be more like Europe. None of them are talking about Spain. No, they, they, they do. They love France. Oh, that was, I had to bet that we, Franco saved his country for 40 years. Like, I've been alive longer than he was in power. What, what good did it do? They're still Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, and that, honestly, no one ever thinks about the Iberians. Like I said, we don't even get good slurs. Look, 
we beat you all in 1899 and that was that was it <laughs> After yeah that, it's, all down, it's all downhill from cool. there we, we had a, we had a really good run in like the 1500s 14 1500s we we're kicking a lot oh, of yeah. ass but you know i remember some rando i encountered on his twitter like you know like the top of the twitter page he was like a canadian like a a monarchist who were like god country and king right and then like his first tweet was complaining about how he wouldn't go fighting he didn't think if we should get like the west should get involved that he wouldn't go fight in ukraine like uh you would if your king told you to yeah you if, your king, if your king said you did you did would you do you would you prefer the four feathers like a proper coward <laughs> he probably would he is canadian <laughs> oh Oh, I look, I know we had some Canadian troops over there that fought bravely, but they also took a break from the GWAT. Yeah, and the thing they is, you wind up Justin with Trudeau as a PM still. I mean, yeah, come on. they've got Justin Trudeau as a PM, they'd wind up with someone like Justin Trudeau as king, you know, and so well, you mean queen. Well, the, well, the, with a prime minister or system, I mean, he basically is. I mean, yeah. it's... Well, and then honestly, but then he could go by his real name of Castro, the you know, the second. <laughs> well, I, dude, I'm just saying, I mean, because technically they're still run by the, uh, the British monarchy. So imagine having Harry and Meghan in your royal dynasty. Yeah, I mean... I mean, come on, man! You're going to tell me monarchy's better? Meghan Markle exists, okay? That, <laughs> I, that's that is the best revenge we ever got on the British. I, still I know. Think that so, Meghan, Meghan Markle is accumulation of some ancient plan hatched by Ben Franklin, <laughs> the, the like, ultimate psyop. Executed in 1776. She's the bride from the Monster Hunter Files. <laughs> like, at, like at some point. After like she went over there, she met Queen Elizabeth. Like her eyes glazed over, and she just said, "Doctor Franklin sends his regards." And has no memory of it. America's oldest enemy. <laughs> I mean, everything is flawed. We talked about this too. I mean, but this every system has flaws, you know. And whether it whether it's dating or buying a house or jobs or or your monarchy versus a republic, whatever it may be. Something's going to suck, and human beings are going to screw it up, guys. But life goes on. And the thing is, they, they, there's, this, there's this thought process that seems to be like they think it's never been this bad before. <clears throat> because and, they didn't live through it before. Oh, yeah, like they're people well, saying, like, oh, we live in a police state now. Things like, there was a time when the government put 100,000 Americans in concentration camps. Like, yeah, what about some of the. Look up some of the stuff Woodrow Wilson did during World War One. Well, he was friggin' evil. I mean, FDR did evil shit. Woodrow Wilson did evil shit. Andrew Jackson did some evil shit. Joe Biden's doing some evil shit. Americans did some evil shit. Yeah, Look, the American I, executive has a tendency to do some evil shit. Let, let, let me provide a solution that might be a good compromise that will get us back towards the original sort of republic, the, the founding fathers era. We keep a republic and a constitutional republic, but we also bring back dueling to settle political scores. <laughs> hey, I'm I all about. I mean, <laughs> I'm hey, all man, about I, you, 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 you want to filibuster this bill? All right, pistols at dawn, motherfucker. Like, I, I just did a 4.5 clean fast drill, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. <laughs> uh, you know, I, how did Larry become governor of Utah? <laughs> hey, Spencer Cox, I'm sick of your attitude. Yeah. <laughs> no. like, well, the Clintons were already doing it. It's just now public. Yeah, the Clintons—they don't duel. You just you know you you uh, you hang yourself. Okay. You uh, there has to be a rule though that you can't hire like a second to duel for you because then it's yeah. just assassination with extra steps. <laughs> okay. It's just... Yeah, because I know some dudes who'd make really good money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, you know, doing that. Nope, it's uh, got to be you. No seconds. Yeah. Okay. So I, I told these guys this story before we jumped on the YouTube, but I was playing I was playing video games tonight, and uh, I smoke this this kid, and uh, he starts screaming and yelling about how I'm cheating. He's like, "Dude, I'm on an Xbox and I'm technically illiterate. Trust me, I'm not a hacker. Okay, I I, I don't even know how to operate my headset. 
correctly. You're, I'm not you're still uh, running Windows 98 on your computer. Yeah, I mean, I am the most technically so I smoke, but I'm good at video games because I'm sweaty. I'm a sweat, right? <laughs> so I smoke this kid, and he's screaming about I'm a cheater. I'm a cheater. I must be cheating. And I'm just like mocking him. I was like, oh, back to the lobby with you, scrub. And he starts screaming out how he fight me in real life, pussy. And it's like, it's like, I'll shoot you in the head. My teammates who all know me in real life start laughing. It's like, oh, dude, this is why you don't, you don't, you don't challenge random strangers on the internet to gun battles, dumbass. <laughs> and I just blocked him and blocked him and left. We had to explain to the other guys on our team. It's like, it's like, yeah, Larry is not the dude you want to challenge to a pistol fight. <laughs> well, that, that's like that that old Simpsons episode where like Homer sees uh, Zorro. And in Zorro, he, uh, you know, slaps some guy and he's like, I challenge you to a duel. And the guy backs down. And he steals his girl and all that stuff. So Homer goes around just slapping people and challenging them to duels to get what he wants because <laughs> everybody backs down. Then he runs into like that Texan caricature in the show <laughs> and he slaps him and he's like, I challenge you to a duel. He's like, I accept. And now Homer has to like get oh, himself. Yeah, it's, like it's like this old Texan guy who's got the RV that says "I love dueling" on it. He's yeah, just, yeah. He's a dueling. He's <laughs> like, I accept. When do you want to do it? <laughs> like this shit would work itself out in short order. Like every time I like like there's some big thing where I get invited to something, and then the 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 mob of angsty dipshits like like comes out to, to uh, dude. Life would be so much simpler for me. As far I as would train. I would dry fire even more than I do now. <laughs> well, there are different kinds of duels, though. As far as I know, the last duel that happened in Prescott, Arizona, where I used to live, Prescott, as the locals call it, they they would laugh at me for calling it Prescott. It's spelled P R E S C O T T. You're Finnish. They can't take your vowels from you. Well, let's. Don't, don't how the locals there call it? Get the fuck out of here, you Californian. <laughs> right? But. Uh, Apparently, the last duel is like a local and an army officer got into it or something. The army officer challenged into a duel and the local accepted, except they were going to like shovel the guts out of a dead cow or something like that. Whoever shoveled the most won. And I guess he decided he didn't want to duel anymore. So it's like, oh, I would have won that too. (laughs) Shoveling dead cow guts. It's it's like a John Henry like competition between like who can hammer in the most stakes. Well, well, remember when Abraham Lincoln got challenged to a duel, and then it was, um, it was, but it was against a short guy, and 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 he wanted to be, I can't remember the details, but it was like standing in the river where it was like over the guy's head, and they were using like twenty pound hammers or something <laughs> ridiculous, and so the, because because the the person being challenged, which that said, some of the people that I hate so much, they could put the most outlandish rules ever for the challenge. And I would still accept and kill them with it. Just, yeah. just pent up I, aggression of 20 years of putting up with these idiots. I'm 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 finding it interesting. I don't know if it's a mistake to to bring back uh dueling, but it would be interesting because now these kids that like really get angry in doomerism, now they would challenge you to a duel, but it would be like a katana duel. It's like so it's like he might have actually studied the blade. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'd be have to go to a, like, a HEMA gym and fucking <laughs> try but, try myself. But off. like, uh, if it was one of like like, like these like, these angsty dipshits that I deal with, like like the hate, like like my, my internet stalker brigade. I don't even know name. You know, you know those you know the fuckers I'm talking about. They 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 could come back with some dual. Time. Well, we'll fight with pool noodles, and I'd be like, okay. And then I like the last thing he'd ever be seen would be like me shoving a pool noodle down his throat. <laughs> you, you just wrap it around your fist like the Rock in that Doom movie. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be like pool noodle around the guy's neck as I'm like, you know. <laughs> How did you tie that into a noose? <laughs> By the power of my hatred that burns like a thousand suns. <laughs> or it's it, it's like a. You, instead of the pool noodles, it's the pool like volleyballs, and now it's dodgeball. It'd be like, oh, I remember this. <laughs> it's like we're riding a bike. Let's go. I mean, like it wouldn't even matter. It would like 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 it wouldn't matter. I'd find a way. <laughs> yeah, I just want to shout out to one of the comments there. Another sloshy fan. Real ones know. <laughs> Mob. <laughs> Actually, Larry, you know what they would do? They would challenge you to a, like a D and D competition. Uh, thinking that it would be like critical role because they've never been in your your groups. It's oh, like, dude, I just beat him to death with a dice bag. I got a chainmail dice bag actually. It's it's basically a sap. So yeah, it totally, <laughs> totally work. Uh, 
I just used the Tetsu the Tetsu bow for with Bale Fighter. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, don't real. you actually have Japanese uh, weaponry? I do. I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. I can't help it. I don't know how to use any of it, but I find it. Actually, I, find, I think it looks cool. I remember I, I mentioned the Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton duel on Twitter because I I, I shared a video. Apparently, some some like Groiper kid to defend the honor of Nick Fuentes accepted a challenge from like this Israeli MMA fighter. I saw that. Go to it. Got the shit beaten out of him. I'm yeah. surprised he showed up. Like okay. Okay, he's a he's a weirdo and he's an anti semite and he's who the fuck gets punched in the face for Nick Fuentes, right? Well, so here's but the thing. Props for showing up, kid. Here's the he thing. Showed up. That could have gone a different way if like Nick Fuentes actually like appeal or like chose his acolytes based off of their value, other than them being like twinks with the broccoli haircut, uh, because that's what he's into. Like I watched that video and it's funny because you go into a gym, and and, and, the, and the dude's a professional MMA fighter, and he's a Jewish guy, and he and, and you after you've been denying the Holocaust, and you go up against a guy who's like a like a black belt in jujitsu, and he's wearing a shirt that says Jew Jitsu. Boy, you're about you're fitting to get your ass whooped. <laughs> and, uh, and it did. You can remember, and, and 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 so the Jewish MMA fighter is just beating the crap out of this guy, and, and the and the big ginger kid's rolling around on the ground getting his ass beat. And the coach is this black dude who's off to the side. And the, and the ginger kid's like crying. And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And the coach is like, boy, there ain't no sorry here. <laughs> Get up. What you and sorry for? Get up, boy. The thing is, guys, if like, I don't think anybody who would watch this stream is a big fan of little Nicky, the cum hunter. But uh, with his rubber boots, he definitely would not take a punch for you. So. No. <laughs> and if he did, he would die because he's He'd like take the, a you a punch. the best description of Nick Fuentes I've ever heard came from Alex Jones. <laughs> salacious oh, crumb. The little <laughs> salacious <laughs> crumb. <laughs> that was the little <laughs> job of the hut, right? The little Muppet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <The little rat. laughs> how did yeah. this? How did this dipshit? Managed to weasel his way into this hanging out with Donald Trump. I don't. Federal funding. Who the fuck is Donald Trump's social secretary? But then again, Donald Trump also hired Bill Barr, the Ruby Ridge yeah. AG. If only we had known he would be a bad AG. If only there was some sort of clue. So whoever the fuck his personal staffing human resources person is, fire them. Holy shit. Oh, his, his personnel choices were awful. Bill Barr. Bar, dude. If like I said, I mean, it was that that one. Every gun nut in America, when he got Bill Barr, every gun nut in America is like, dude, you you know who Bill Barr is, right? No, we all know who he is. He doesn't. He should have just gone right out and picked Janet Reno. Shit, dude, cut out the middleman, Ruby Rich, <laughs> and, and that was the guy. And he's like, and he for the same job. It wasn't like he hired him for a different job. Like, maybe he'd be better at this other job. No, the same fucking job. Oh, my gosh. If he hadn't hired Bill Barr, he'd still be president today. And this would all be a moot point. Like, seriously. Just somebody be like, huh, I wonder if all this election fortification stuff that all these mega corporations are doing, if that violates some laws. Maybe we should look yeah. into that. <laughs> nah. Uh, nah. Yeah, Nick Fuentes is not going to take a punch for you. He'll take a fist for you, but not a punch. So. <laughs> He might take a fist from you. But... <laughs> oh, shit. As for how, that's exactly the, that kind of circles back to our original topic of discussion. How does an obviously mentally ill fetal alcohol syndrome kid like that get a huge following? Federal the... funding. Mm, quite yeah, possibly. all right, look, look. Does he really have federal funding? Let's Let's look at it this way, okay? The only people that were like really on the ground and agitating shit at January 6th that aren't in jail and have never had uh, charges brought them or like absolute bullshit charges that get uh, pled down to, you know, barely anything and then still allowed to operate are Ray Epps and Nick Fuentes and Baked Alaska, who is their financier or the, the financial records keeper for America First. So he's got all the names, all the passwords, all the credit cards, all the, the mailing list of all their members. And he did like 90 days in the county jail. 
and I then they let out to just keep doing what they're doing. Yeah, I didn't know Nick Frentis was there. Okay, oh, interesting. He wasn't, he wasn't there, was he? Did he? Uh, which no guy, even if he wasn't, they could still get him on being the guy that coordinated the people that were. Mm. Wow. Interesting. So, he'd yeah. do a, he'd do okay in prison. I mean, he'd be worth at least a couple packs of cigarettes. Yeah, he, he'd enjoy himself in prison. I don't know if he'd do okay in prison. King Gorilla! I will sell him for one pack! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to get my Adventure Brothers on there. No, no, you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> Give me my oh. bitch back! No, he's mine now. <laughs> or whatever. Hey, King Gorilla! Holy shit, you're Hank Venture. Or you're Dean Venture. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's back. He looks angrier. Oh, I man. think he's angry at his... Uh, his he's angry. Yeah. yeah. You, hey, should also get, you should also get Starlink. It couldn't possibly be any worse than your internet is now. Starlink's is, been pretty good for me. How is yeah. it? I live in a small town, like, seriously, of 1,300 people. I can get gigabit internet here. It's the internet is never. You only have thirteen hundred people using it. <laughs> I I am very very far down a road towards a canyon up into the mountains, and so my problem is to run a line down here. It would just be for the people along the line, and there's not enough of us to make that worth it for me. So, no. I mean, other places the other places are between places, so you could run fiber through. There is nothing beyond me. Well, <laughs> you know, so. part, of, part of the reason yeah, is Larry is, Korea hubris right there. Yeah. <laughs> we're surrounded well, geography more than hubris. I mean, there's just not much sur- past that. We're also surrounded by corn and soybean farms, and modern farming actually uses a lot of like GPS and oh, stuff. Oh, shit. So. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> hey, no, farming's easier. Easy. Michael Bloomberg said so. Yeah. Yeah. Just, well, according, according to. Uh, According to John Kerry, farming is uh, making the earth heat up. Because so, so you know it, it might actually only get okay. it, it might only get down to forty two below instead of forty four this not coming winter. You you want proof that not everything gets worse all the time? That there is hope and some things get better? That motherfucker was never president. There you go. That Malthusian motherfucker has never been president of the United States. Well, because he, that guy would have did some genocide. He, he he legitimately got elected, but it was stolen. We can talk about that stolen election. Oh, that's fine. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm surprised I didn't. I'm surprised I didn't get arrested for writing up a blog post about how auditing works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God, yeah. <laughs> Why? Oh, well. What? Watch yourself, like uh, they'll send a whole, uh, send a whole like assault team too. I'm not even a Trump guy. I just wrote a thing about how auditing works and how auditing is a good thing for this for elections. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Larry's door blows in, blows in, and <laughs> yeah, but but it's it's like the uh, that meme or that video of the SWAT team just entering in like through the drywall and shit. <laughs> yeah, you guys just see big spotlight come through the window from the Black Hawk that's landing. <laughs> Guy comes in through the roof and falls flat on his and face. He just he just hands you a copy of Dead Six. He's like, I'd like an autograph, please. <laughs> We have a door, jackass. Hey, if I have any fans at whatever federal agency this is, give me a warning first. I'll, I'll go along peacefully, and I really like my dog. I'll, I'll, I'll send the dog to the neighbors. I mean, just please. I, I just want. I'm trying to protect the dog. Okay, he's a good boy. He knows too much. Faust has done nothing wrong. <laughs> I like I, Mike I would say the same thing about Penny, but he would be suspiciously quiet about Jax. <laughs> He's yeah, actually, he had a, he made a deal. He's fine. He he, do fine. he turned on so many people. Mike Mike's bird Mike's bird knows Ray Epps. <laughs> How do you think they got Noriega? Just saying. <laughs> not Wait, saying it was Jax, but he's not saying it wasn't either. <laughs> That's where parrots are from. I attributed this quote to my parrot. It's a it's apophical. Are you paying attention yet? 
<laughs> Civil War. <laughs> So I should be a YouTuber. If, if, I, I imagine this is all a joke, but I imagine uh, that Jax is really more like Iago from Aladdin, where he just like sounds like Gilbert Gottfried shouting in Mike's ear while sitting on his shoulder. You know, we all, uh, then he's eating too much of her bits. The the smartwatch oh. here has a decibel meter on it, right? He broke ninety right here. <laughs> that's great, like right in your ear. He's uh, uh, your hearing uh, was already fucked. What? No. <laughs> Yeah. Hey guys, I gotta take my daughter to college tomorrow. Um, far away. How much? Uh, where are we at on time, Pete? We are over two hours, so this is a good. Yeah, time. this okay. is a good time to start wrapping things up. Yeah, I'm losing fifty percent of my kids out of the house this week because uh, my son just left on his mission to Peru. So All we right. have sh- got rid of him for two years, and my I'm taking my daughter back to college. Is what? If he comes back with a parrot, watch out. Yeah, because it's probably it's probably Noriega's parrot. Um, and then uh, I got one more kid that's moving out later later this year, and so I will be down seventy five percent of my children. That sounds awful out of context. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say no, it doesn't. It sounds awesome, <laughs> and it sounds like I'm gonna have a lot more money. It sounds like some nineteenth century shit. Though. Yeah, we lost we lost three of our children. You know? Yeah. It's like- on the Oregon Trail? Like, what the fuck? No, this, this is happy getting rid of them. <laughs> Bridget just sees you walk in the door with a shitload of minis and, and ammo. He's <laughs> just like, we can afford this again. Actually, the only, the only thing that's going to actually be bad is I, I'm losing my gunsmith because my, my oldest boy was a fantastic gunsmith, and so I'm losing him. So when we were cleaning out his room, like he was putting all his stuff into storage, and, you know, he had 18 guns in his room. 18. That, and that's not that's not all that he's built. That's just with like current projects, you know. I'm not talking strip receivers. I'm ta- I don't know how many you, those there are. Why did you take them out on a boating trip? <laughs> oh, and then we did. We went down. We went down the canyon and we promptly lost them all. And it was just yeah. a tragedy. A very it's sad. Horrible. 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 Lower your voice. <laughs> <laughs> if he can, he, uh, he's not watching this stream, but if he was, he'd be like, Dad, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where'd the 3D printer go? What 3D printer? <laughs> it's over there with the CAD machine. Uh... <laughs> there was shit in there that I didn't even know we had because I just, for the last four years, is how I kept. So, Doomers, this is how you get, this is, you want to get your life right? Just start building AR 15s off of Black Friday sales, and then you will be too busy and preoccupied to worry about, and, and broke, to worry about anything else. And your mechanical ability will impress girls. And if it doesn't, you've got 18 AR-15s. So, yep. <laughs> oh boy, that's a, that that sounded wrong. And I saw Mike be like, "Oh, that might be a recipe for a problem down the road." But yeah. no, nah, they're already out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. But I right, was tell you, for, 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 you're talking about guys who pick, who pick up girls, like young gun guys, like. Eh. I mean, it, it, no. Here, here's what you do: you go to the range with a tripod and just be like, "Oh, I forgot my camera. What am I going to do with this?" Then that gun bunny Instagram chick is going to be like, "I've got this camera and I need a tripod." It's it's the perfect neat cute. All right, to, to, to just complete my mystique here is for, uh, you know, my alpha male uh, Sigma grind or whatever the fuck it is. Um, I, uh, me and Bridget's first date was shooting. Yeah, the, the, the first date, date, I took her, I took her shooting. There you go, boys. That's how you find a girl who is, you know, simpatico. You go shoot guns. Okay, so so everybody likes, um, oh, what's her name? Emily Blunt, right? Like from... Um... A Quiet Place. Uh, what else was she in? Uh, was she Day in After Sicario? Tomorrow. Yeah, was, yeah, she yeah. was. Um, which guy? So John Krasinski, the guy that plays Jim in The Office. You know how he got her on a first date and they ended up married with kids and all that? He took her to a gun range. It even oh, works really? in Hollywood. Oh, and wow. she's British. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Double bang. Double whammy. Yeah. My, my first date with my wife was we had pizza and watched a riff track. So it wasn't a range, but it just, it was culture is what it was. <laughs> culture. Yes. 
No, we shot guns, went for a hike, and then watched UFC 2. <laughs> there you go. Back back before there was rules or anything? It was Tank Abbott. Or, I remember two or maybe three, but it was Tank Abbott versus Kim Shamrock. And we rented it on VHS from <laughs> Hastings. Wow. <laughs> And the kids are all boomer. <laughs> nah, Gen X bitches, the best Gen. <laughs> Coop, Coop so, we'll, we'll adopt Coop because he's got the attitude. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like like a majority of the, uh, my friends and guys I worked with were Gen X, so I always felt home there. I, I also like even from a young age, like uh, when I was like eight or nine. My brother would drag me to his uh, like Star Wars cards tournaments and that shit, and I would play there as well. So I'm that eight year old at the card tournament with like a bunch of thirty year olds and that shit. There's like this life size predator maquette, like you know, standing over my shoulder the entire time. So <laughs> cross, you're cross generational. Yeah, you uh, you identify as. <laughs> That's I don't mean brag, but I'm kind of an old soul, you know, like it's like with lovely people into any other group, though. They try to they make these broad generalizations about generations. Like people are born every single day. You can't just divide it up into 20 year chunks and say the, the whole generation thing is the stupidest triggers. bucket. It's the dumbest bucket. Because you're talking about dividing everybody with a bucket. It's like it's like you and 40 million other people are gonna share opinions on what? I mean, what whether you grew up on Transformers or Power Rangers, I don't fucking know. It's the dumbest. It's the yeah. dumbest division of all. Uh, uh, constant arguments about generation this or generation that. It's just, it's it's like come generation go to the gym. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at least generation. Maybe, maybe actually read some of the philosophy you keep harping on about. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna act like I'm gonna I'm gonna act like I read Greek philosophy, but the odds of them actually having read Greek philosophy, I'm not gonna put money on that. No, they, they read somebody's Substack take on that Greek philosopher, and then they write their own Substack uh, article oh. about it. Oh, you're a fan of the Greek philosophers? Huh? I bet you've never even drank hemlock. <laughs> Name all their songs. <laughs> no, I've never drank hemlock, but it's my favorite gun on Call of Duty right now. Do you even do? Do you even do trigonometry, bro? I look. I've I've drank hemlock. All right, it's called IPA, and never again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait. It's like it's like uh, it's like you're a fan of the Greek philosophers, but do you even wrestle naked with other oily <laughs> men? <laughs> and Nick I mean, Fuentes they... is like. <laughs> they do. It's just that he's got jujitsu written on him. Hey, I can't say my 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 uh, my youngest son, who is always my nerdier son, has started doing jujitsu for the last year. That has been like the best friggin' thing ever for like a for like a uh, uh, young man to gain confidence is beating the ever living shit out of people. Like it builds confidence in a boy. Just choke the shit out of somebody, and you will feel better about yourself. Yeah, that or like the Highland Games, you know, <laughs> which it's hard to lack confidence when you can just hurl a fucking tree trunk. Yeah, you throw a tree trunk. Yeah. Like I have never met a rodeo. Like I live out here in cowboy country. And Pete will probably back up. Have you ever met a rodeo kid that lacks confidence? <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or going back with the Scottish Games thing. Have you ever met somebody who lacks confidence while they're playing the bagpipe? No. no, it doesn't matter what you they can't. look like, because you need to be confident in yourself. If you're playing the bagpipes. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're you're basically torturing an octopus. I mean, you're a badass motherfucker. <laughs> and usually, a cop has already died, so it's like you know. <laughs> oh man! All right, boys, I gotta, I, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta go be a responsible dad tomorrow. <laughs> Unlike them uh, yeah. So we're going to wrap this up and uh, we will see you all next month. All right, boys. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Have hope! <laughs> yeah, if you can take anything from here, have hope. All right. Night, guys. <laughs>